You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, patrons, and welcome to this episode of Addressing Gettysburg. Um, For those of you who have been around on Patreon since the beginning, uh, or who have gone all the way back to the beginning and binged all the episodes, you might remember the name Ken Rich. He was on an episode in the early days. We talked about uh, the town during the battle i can't remember something to do with the town um but uh and then we said well we have you back on to talk about the hospital complexes in town and then you know you want to give time between guests every once in a while you don't want to do it too back to back because then people get sick of people so you you spread it out but then the rona hit and that ruined everything we lost a whole year but ken is back we are all back and um today we are talking with the man in the red shirt about the hospitals and the hospital complexes in town here at Gettysburg after the battle. Ken, welcome to the show. Welcome back. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we've been talking about this for a long time. Anybody who knows, if you if you if you get a, t- a chance to like sit and talk with Ken, um, there's a lot of information that comes out. And I think we're going to have a lot of that today. So this will be a lot of fun. A lot of people are interested in medical. Everything to do with it. You exactly. Know, got a I lot mean, of nurses and stuff that right. listen. Yeah, medical reenactors. You know, the park has uh, a hospital site that's one of mm-hmm. the premier sites to visit, the yep. George Spangler Farm. It's great. Right. Great. And then yep. uh, private on the outside, the Daniel Lady Farm, again, a hospital site. And and this is what draws people to the battlefield in the medical end. Yeah. You know, some folks don't realize one or two of these reenactors are actually surgeons. Yeah. yeah. I mean, real life, in real life. Yeah. And we've and got a some guys who are that, doctors. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and so they bring their expertise to the story and they're going to go back and look at medicine in 1863 through their eyes and they mm-hmm. understand it yes and oh my gosh i'm still looking these words up <laughs> they understand <laughs> what the words are oh my god what did he die of <laughs> you yeah know? Oh well right gosh. and then and back then they had okay. different names for them than we have today well okay and i forget there's one i was looking up and, and I, when i found out it was basically a skin rash all right and but he it died from it? It, yeah oh, I, well it was a strep rash but i mean uh. still the name was uh, you know i i had to send i had to email friends to find out what the heck <laughs> they were talking about you know yeah but that brings us to a couple things okay all right so first off all right and, and i like to, uh, now i do a disclaimer okay it's entirely possible i make a mistake today right you're not a doctor <laughs> okay right I, I'm, yeah i'm not a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> yeah some folks are saying why do you have him talking on your show but um, here's the thing yeah. right okay so most of the days the core of today's work was actually research done by greg coco in okay. the 80s so 1980s. Okay. All right. He puts out Vassia Misery, mm. a fantastic study, a picture, a, a, just a series of pictures of the hospital sites in and around the town of Gettysburg after the battle. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, he realized, too, as he's doing his research, when he does his second edition, he puts in the first page 20 corrections at least. All right. Okay. So even in a time period, that's the other thing, too. If you're an author and you put a book out, then stuff you're looking for shows up. <laughs> of course <laughs> you know, and always as soon as as soon as the publisher hits that button <laughs> there it is yeah. all right so but now all right so we're 30 years later 40 years later and we're looking at Greg's stuff and we've gone through personal accounts that we found now we found newspaper articles and they've added to the story mm-hmm. and so hopefully i've found some of them but again there are probably still mistakes floating around in 20 or 40 year old research that'll be corrected sure so we understand that right all right it's researching gettysburg is a living breathing it thing, is and yep. it grows yes, uh, yes so we have that yes so so i want everybody to kind of understand and that researching and history in general exactly. is, is i mean it, nothing is everybody wants it to be finite or absolute and black and white and it's not because because new information comes out and you have to change things sure yeah so and, and folks you know they used to ask well you know what stories are the guides telling and my analogy is take all these gettysburg stories and put them on a sheet of paper and there's a pile uh-huh. All right, and when everybody's telling, you know, the the top story, go down to the bottom of the pile and pull out something that they're not telling. Yeah. All right, All right. and so that's the key, and so that's kind of what we're doing here. Okay. All right. Good. So we'll start it, kick it right in. Civil War medicine. Civil War medicine. You got to right? start okay. with that. And oh my gosh, the Battle of Manassas. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, the Civil War starts there. 
Good. Okay, so we're going to start with Manassas. Right. We're going to show uh, what what the hospital situation, the medical situation right. was like back then, and how it uh, improved to Gettysburg. Exactly. Okay, okay so, go ahead. So look, give me that for a second. Yeah. All right, so Manassas has, you know, the battle is a couple hours, and a, a little bit of fight the day before, and, you know, it's all said and done, and now the war is not going to last to be over in 30 days. Right. All right? But... There's 2,600 wounded soldiers total at Manassas. Okay. All right. They're still picking people up off of the battlefield, wounded soldiers, a week later. It's amazing that anybody survived that long. With a wound. All right. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and typical, too, if they can't get up, it's because they have a leg or arm wound or more that is just impossible to, to right. move. Right. All right. So think about that. They can't crawl, so they're still laying there, but they're still alive seven days later. That's amazing. And, and it is. It you know, is. I mean, the the and that's early in the war. Yeah. At Gettysburg, I'd understand that because now they've had two years of hardening, and these are tough people. Right. I mean, they are tough. Right. Right. Okay, right. For that. All right. So anyway, one week, twenty six hundred, and then a year later, Antietam. Okay. All right, and we just passed the Antietam anniversary. Yes. Okay. So this time of year, Antietam. 17,300 wounded. Okay. Okay? And again, these numbers, everybody right. argue with them, and yeah. anybody that wants to can argue with them, but anything is it about, so if I didn't say about, yeah. it means about. Right. Okay? It's about so, 1,700. Right. Most thousand. of the wounded are removed to hospital sites within 24 hours. Okay. Now okay. they're improving. They're improving, what's, recovering what's the wounded. What's different? What's happened? Experience. Right? I mean, experience. All right. But a lot of that goes to Jonathan Letterman. I'll get to him. Okay. All right. But let's go back to Manassas for a second. And this is what these guys have to start with. Uh -huh. All right. Civil War doctors. All right. In 1861, the U.S. Army has 115 Civil War doctors. Okay. All right. Now. Okay. And, and just the advertisement. Abe wants 100,000 more, 75,000 volunteers, all right? right? Where are you going to get the doctors to handle these men? Now, of that 115, all right, and, and we must as well say this, you know, they're all not all going to be northern doctors. Right. right? Oh, yeah. Now, a lot of them, all right, a lot of the doctors that were trained in Baltimore end up being southern doctors. Okay. All right? So there's that part of it, all right? Um, 30 of them are surgeons, all right, so in 1861 terms, that's a real doctor. Right. Right. <laughs> 84 are assistant surgeons. Okay. All right. All right. That's kind of, uh, I want to put it in the right perspective. Uh, and I would say like a physician's assistant today. Today. Okay. okay? So basically a doctor, but not exactly okay. a doctor. Not, not exactly. And then we'll go to that. All right. So where are we going to get doctors from? Right, we're going to get them from the volunteer regiments. Okay. All right. So when you're around, if your regiment comes from Pittsburgh, all right, and um, you know it joins the Army of the Potomac in Washington D.C. You might have bought three or four doctors with you. Uh -huh. All right, so one stays with the regiment, and the other three go to the core hospital. Okay. All right, so what they're going to do is they're going to make a leveling. They'll they'll get them, and, and that way they can get the expertise. Mm. And believe it or not, even then they still have specialties. All right. Oh, really? All right. They 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 already still have some. All right, it, it's just developing. Okay, we have to start thinking about when we're looking at this. It's like you know we're planting seeds for a medical garden that's going to grow. Right, sure, sure. All right, and that's what's happening here. All right, now the volunteer regiments—they've got one, two, three, four doctors. All right, now this is how much training they've had. They've had two years, the volunteer doctors, two years of unregulated college. All right, so that is like editing the community college and all the <laughs> medical courses. <laughs> okay. okay, all right, okay. They have never treated a gunshot wound. Almost all of them have never treated a gunshot wound. They're in for a rude awakening. They have. They, they've never done surgery. They have never done surgery. All right. They still think that anesthesia is a girl's name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. And, and, I, and I gave you a picture for a medical kit. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let me, so uh, you can pop that one out. I'm going to get right. that one here. Everything that you needed to join the Army with and be a Civil War surgeon, you can get in the saw aisle at Home Depot. All right. And this is what the surgeon kits looks like. It's kind of a glare there. Can you see uh, that, Eric? We can, or, or okay. we, we can pull out the sleeve if you have to. So we got, that's all right. We got it. So we got the saw here. Right. Various, that is a nasty looking saw, too. That's it. But I'll tell you what, if I'm doing miter cuts, that's the baby I want. Yeah. 
<laughs> so you got the saw there, and then these are the knives, different right. surgeons' knives. Sure. Clamps. Tourniquets. Right. What, I guess, what are these for, like, uh, probes and stuff? Yes, exactly. Okay, probes. probes. All right, and then you have what a couple that? walks. What is that? Well, okay, I'm not sure. But all right, loop. okay, but... All right, it does have an adjustment here. Uh huh. All right, so it, it's clamping, so you can, I can tell by that that you can. Um, it's like telescoping. Right. Okay, so you can loosen or tighten that. Now, what it's for? What what is for in surgery? At that point, that's over my level. Yeah. All right. I point the instrument, say, "Oh my gosh, they're going to use that on me," or <laughs> laugh at you because, "Oh my gosh, they're going to use that on you." <laughs> <laughs> it's so like, is it, it like a scraper or something? Well, maybe? yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, I mean, we we. Don't know exactly how some of these things are used, but I suspect that if a surgeon's watching this or listening to this, he knows what it's for because yeah. I bet they're still using it. Oh, sure. It, right? Um, over here, all right, on this side, the clamps, uh -huh. all right? All right, so that clamp, today I was explaining earlier, if you ever had to make a picture frame, Right. All right. So you get this belt that goes around the four pieces and there's a corner and one of the corners has a screw and you tighten it and it tightens the belt. Yeah. Take away those corners and put that around your leg and now you have a tourniquet. Right. All right. So again, we're using the same technology that the carpenters used then. All right. And now the surgeons are using it. Mm. So think about that. Mm. All right. Now, the person that changes all this and when does it happen? In June 1862... Major Jonathan Letterman is given the position as medical director of the Army of the Potomac. Okay. Right? Now, realize that there are dozens of surgeons that outrank him, mm -hmm. but because they outrank him, they also don't want his job. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. 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 So, so there's that part of it. So, he gets the job. Do you, you don't have a picture of him in here, do you? I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Then I won't. Screen. Oh, you got one on the screen. Perfect. Okay, great. All right. So, Letterman. All right. And, and so, this is Letterman's system. All right, he puts in basically four major changes. One, all right, a plan for the care of the wounded. All right, okay. so that's it. So the one, forward aid stations. All right, how many of you guys, MASH fans? Sure, right. sure, grew up watching MASH. Exactly, all right, yeah. so once in a while, they're scary, they have to go to the forward aid station. And the forward aid station would have a, a, a doctor and one or two orderlies or assistants. All right, they're at the front line. All right, uh, Gettysburg example. I don't want to go crazy on stuff, but the um, the hospital for the thirty second Massachusetts over in uh, over by the uh, Stony Hill there. Right, Stony Hill, yeah. right behind the, the Irish Brigade Monument. Yeah. All right, and so they're using those rocks. All right, so that's the aid surgeon. So, okay. okay, so he's got a surgeon with the unit out on the field. All right. right where they're fighting at. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. right, nose to nose. All right, he's got that. All right. Then, field hospital. All right, and so, you know, MASH, that's the field hospital. Mm -hmm. All right, and, you know, now it's mobile and they put a fancy title to it, but that's the same field hospital that they're using here at Gettysburg. Okay. All right, same concept. Then, once they recover on mass, they fly them off to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. All right. And there's, you know, geisha girls and swimming pools and all that other fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. But in reality here is once they can travel by train, then they can send them to Harrisburg or Philadelphia or Baltimore. Okay. All right. Um, Where they have big hospitals. Well, yeah. Okay. So, and let's give an example. All right. So, for those rock and roll fans in Baltimore, Pier 6, everybody's going there at some time to listen to a band. Okay. Take that entire space and make it a hospital because it was. Okay. So, there okay, you go. Okay, so, so, while you're rocking and rolling, there were people who were bleeding was, and dying. Or, actually, no, they were convalescing because right, they were exactly. in better shape. And hopefully, they would. All yeah. right. But you also got to remember, too, just because you're convalescing doesn't make you made it. All right. Correct. All right, so we're going to go through this, and if you research further, you're going to find soldiers that die from their Gettysburg wounds in November and December and January and three years later. Okay. All right, I mean, it just it just depends. Right. right? And oh my gosh, imagine suffering for a couple of years. <laughs> all right. And, 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 no, no, and, no, I can't. Right. And Sounds so, like a nightmare. All right. And so the main hospital or the long-term hospitals. All right, so that's your three steps. Aid station, field hospital, main hospital in a civilized town. Okay. Okay, so you got that, all right? Second thing, triage, mm -hmm. right? They use this in the emergency room every day today. Yep. All right, triage. Do I need to help him right away? Help him now. Can I have him wait on the side 
because he's not that bad off and I take the more important cases. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, there's nothing I can do for this guy. All right. We'll give him um, some laudum or something and set him on the side. Okay. All right. And hopefully he'll pass peacefully. Prioritize. Prioritize. Yeah. It does. Okay. So he does that. Then, standard operating procedure for intake of patients. Oh my gosh. Before Antietam, there are guys dying in the hospitals and they don't know their names. Hmm. Yeah. Right, no, so, you, t- you told me that before okay, the so, show. And, and so they're That's filling crazy. out cards for them. Yeah. All right. Um, and so now those cards either show up individually or they show up on the unit's muster out roll. Okay. okay. So, all right. So I go looking at this. So what does that mean? Every company in the Army of the Potomac, when their term of, ser- term of service ended, right. right, they have a muster out roll. All right. Um, everybody from the company that's fine and went home. Everybody from the company that died during the war. All right. And, you know, the last, th- those guys that skipped <laughs> the deserters. <laughs> right. Right. Sure. But when I go through, right, at first, early in the war, there's no information for what happened to them in the hospitals. But later in the war, all right, we get into 1862, we start getting more details. Uh-huh. What did they desire, die from? All right. And, and then we're going to separate two. We're going to talk about battle casualties. But remember that I think more soldiers died in the Civil War from disease than anything else. I, right? I think that's what most people right. agree and, on. Yeah. And so uh, it's great now we have a park in D.C. That, that are the fortifications around D.C. Yeah, yeah. All right. What we also need is something to spot all the hospital sites around D.C. Oh, that would be awesome. All right. Because behind those were large military hospitals. I'm telling you, people we, are really interested in that and, stuff. And we can track some of this stuff down. Sure. But uh, it, it's, again, I mean, God bless Greg Coco for all that he found. Yeah. And, and everybody else is finding bits and pieces. You know, what does? And, and where do we find it? We find um, either there's whole records of the hospital. All right. Or in the case of Gettysburg, it may be a note from somebody writing a letter to her sister uh-huh. that says what was happening in her house. And, and so that's how we find some of this information, too. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, absolutely. So before I get off. Okay, so uh, standard operating procedure uh, for intake of patients. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's it. three. Uh, brand spank and new ambulance corps. Ambulance. Okay. okay. Go ahead. I so, got a picture of those somewhere. Um, and that should be right there in the beginning. Yep, I believe okay. it is. There, nope, 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 nope. There it, there is. it is. Okay, so okay. each of the corps, as I understand it, has 100 ambulances. Oh, you got one, Eric. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so each of the corps has 100 ambulances. Now, what's that mean? All right, that means that they can take the wounded off the field and they can set their hospital, the field hospital, mm-hmm. that's going to need water mm-hmm. up against a stream. Like, Rock Creek. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Or Marsh Creek. Okay. All right. So when we go looking for the farms on the battlefield, think about that. Sure. All right. Think about um, water source. So you want to put it's, it by water. Right. So Gettysburg, it's a valley. Yeah. Right. To the west, five miles is Marsh Creek. Mm-hmm. All right. Running kind of west to south. Mm-hmm. All right. And then to the east, four to five miles is Rock Creek. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of running east to north. All right. Mm-hmm. And so it's not a surprise that both armies are putting their hospitals near these farms. Oh, Ken's getting a phone call no, he's now. Not. He's just got to uh, nope. tell it to <laughs> leave him alone. Okay, go All ahead. Right, so, um, <laughs> and, and I don't want that car warranty. <laughs> okay, okay, so there we go. Hello, this is the warranty department. <laughs> uh, all right, so water source. Water source, yeah. so ambulances. So think about this. Um, 165,000 men, okay? 50,000 mules and horses, all right? They need 10 gallons of water a day, Yeah. all right? If you fire a cannon, you need a gallon of water to clear out the barrel so it doesn't explode when you're loading again, mm-hmm. all right? That's frowned upon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right? That, then, then you end up in one of the field hospitals. Right. right? Okay, so, so a wa- the ambulance can get you to a water source, all right? Okay. Um, emergencies... You know, we get the ambulance to set up another location. All right, and we'll talk about that. All right. Distribution system for medical supplies. All right. In the train yards at Washington, D.C., and Baltimore, Maryland, and Westminster, Maryland. Okay. Are supplies in the boxcars. All right. So, um, let's see. Let me try to remember this. A boxcar in 1863 full weighs 8,000 pounds. 
Okay. All right. Yeah. Right? It, the, car, the car itself is 2,000 pounds and 6,000 pounds of supplies. Wow. All right. So, all right. But think about this. Um, okay. So that's 6,000 pounds, right? And one case of hardtack weighs 100 pounds. Hmm. God. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then if I do that, I can put. Yeah, 60 times 100, I can put 60 cases of hardtack mm-hmm. and I've hit the weight limit. Right. All right. Um, ammunition comes, and, and, and somebody will correct me on that, but its weight might is, is like 100 pounds of ammunition and 20 pounds of box. Okay. All right. So, you know, think about that, the box that they're putting this stuff in. Sure. It's 120 pounds, so that messes your math up. But you get an idea. Yeah. All right. Now, what does that mean in today's world? In today's world, that means that you can have three pickup trucks and you can fill them up with boxes or whatever. Uh-huh. And that's what would fit in a train car of supplies. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And so they weren't very big. They weren't no, as big as they are now. No. No. They're just, um, they, they they grow too. Everything grows in the Civil War. Right. All right. Guns do. Yeah. And engineering does. It's and amazing. railroads does. I mean, a lot right. of what we right. have today right. stems from the Civil War. Right. And they just figured out to, to get to that 8,000 pounds is that they can use four axles. Two axles on the front of the car and two axles on the back. Uh-huh. The same thing they do today. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and that's how they discovered how to do that. Okay, all right? so, okay. Anyway, distribution. All right, so they know approximately how many of these box cars a core hospital is gonna need for X amount of days, Okay. right? Not realizing what the monumental task Gettysburg is actually gonna be. Right, all why? Right? Well, because of the numbers. Right. All right, the numbers are astronomical, all right? So, Okay, um, Gettysburg. All right, I'll use some figures, right? Uh, casualties, and we typically say 51,000, all right? So 7,000 killed outright, mm-hmm. all right? Now, of the 33,000 wounded, all right, a lot of those guys aren't going to make it either. Right. All right, and they're not going to make it shortly, all right? So we got that. So, but they're going to be listed as wounded or mortally wounded, mm-hmm. all right? Because, well, and it's the Army, die. and you need to categorize things. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it, oh, my gosh, don't put them in the wrong <laughs> slot. God right? forbid. Okay, okay. 10,790 missing, okay? So both sides have prisoners, all right? Right. But also think about this. When Pickett's guys are coming across the Emmitsburg Road and the canister opens up uh, that first time, and all you see is, you know, that pink, pink or mist. red mist of death. All right. Those guys hit by cat, they just vanish. Yes. All right. And so missing, you know, <laughs> and, and maybe they'll put down missing and presumed dead. Right. All right. Because maybe you kind of remember that he fell to your left, but you didn't see what happened to him. Right. All right. So that's your casualty figures. That's what we're working with here. Okay. And, and so that's a whole lot. I mean, 33,000, Antietam 17,000. All right. So we've upped the ante. So we've got a bigger... Pot mess to clean up exactly, now. Exactly. A year or so later, right. almost a year later. Right. Now, all right, so who's going to help with this? Right? So now we, we've already talked about the doctors. Right. All right. And the Army Nurse Corps, Dorothea Dix. All right. I have uh, a qu- I want to stop ahead. you real quick. I go have ahead. a question here. So uh, someone had sent an email the other day, not knowing we were doing this, but he wants to know if there were male nurses, because he's a male nurse. Yes. And I mean, there had to be, right? Right, but they're going to yeah. call them orderlies. Orderly. That's okay. what I said. Okay. 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 Or, or, wait, hold on a second. Walt Whitman was one. Yeah, that's Walt right. Whitman assistant surgeons. Yep. All right. I mean, assistant surgeons, I mean, that's kind of where they are. All right. Uh, but today, you know, you, you, depending upon where you're at in the medical field, you know, you might have a nursing degree, but you also might have a physician's assistant, all right, which mm-hmm. is the same thing school wise as, you know, six years of nursing or whatever. It's, right. it's, it's getting crazy with that. But you get the idea. Yeah. All right. And and remember that initially, all they had was orderlies. Mm. Mm. Right? All right. The female nurses, they start to come in around those hospitals, around Washington, D.C., between Manassas and Antietam. So, and they're volunteers. And Dorothea Dix starts this. Right. And, and she puts pretty strict limits. Yes. Right? 
And I Can't mean, be pretty. Well, yeah. You, 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 oh my God! Don't don't send a pretty girl. Okay? No, God forbid. She's just hunting for the husbands. Pretty girls don't want to. <laughs> she's just they don't want to take care of guys. Anyway. That's what she says. Yeah, I know. All right, yeah. and and we can't. Ugly now, women don't want husbands. Talk, apparently, exactly. If you're talking <laughs> nice to the guy, then you're flirting with him. Right. All right. Not you know. Oh my gosh, she hasn't seen his mother in two years. Right. You're giving her what are comfort. You do? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So aid and comfort to the wounded. We don't want to do that. Yeah. Nice. But that's, backwards attitude. But that's Dorothea. cool. All right. So. The numbers that of nurses are here, and there's going to be three categories of nurses, and I'm not going to have a good figure on it because I don't think anybody knows, all right? But Dix is on on the 4th and 5th of July. Gettysburg's happened, and she's at the, if I got it right, she's at the train station at Philadelphia. Okay. And she's already telegraphed for her volunteers to meet her here from the uh, Massachusetts and New York and oh. Baltimore and Washington, D.C., and they're all coming to Philadelphia, and she's sending them. Oh. Now, okay, we're not talking about huge numbers. Okay. okay. I, am I talking about 30 or 60? Maybe that's where I'm at. I, I'm still into this. Okay, right? you're okay. still... Okay, so, so you I, haven't so finished right. this research exactly, yet. Exactly. Okay, okay, gotcha. Now, who else is she going to have with her? All right? She has, believe it or not, upset some young ladies. No. And they quit. <laughs> all right? What a shock. And so they show up, as nurses for the Christian Commission hmm. or the Sanitary Commission. All right, so now that's our next round of volunteers. All right, um, Christian Commission is founded on November 1861 by a George H. Stewart. Okay. Okay, no relation to George Hume Stewart here. Okay, okay gotcha. All right, tents and camp meetings. All right, so, you know, we see the movies and these Baptist church revivals in the old movies, right, where they've got a tarp and a, and a minister and give me your dollars. Well, they're doing that for the wounded. All right, so that's what the Christian Commission's doing. All right, they have one standard policy. They help both sides alike. Because we're all Christians. We're all Christians. Right. All right. Headquarters in town will be the George Little House. And that's a white house on the north side of West Middle Street. Okay. Okay. All right. And it, it has a, a hedge next to it. I don't have a picture of it. So let's see where we got here. All right. We're we moving are, to our map for the people just listening yes. to the audio so, only version. All right. Let's have fun. God, I need right. a magnifying glass. I know. This is Middle Street here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's here where my finger is. All right. Like all right, right about okay, here. So right about there. Okay. All right. Okay. That corner. So that's going to be the headquarters, right? You know, the bosses. Who's with them here? George Junkin, a name you probably vaguely remember. Okay? Never heard it. Okay, well, his wife, I'm sorry, his daughter was married to Stonewall Jackson. Oh. And he is a Union Christian Commission delegate. Interesting. Here, all right? Um, again, Jackson's father-in-law <laughs> and staunch unionist. Okay. This is his current father-in-law, or did, did he have I a wife who died? I think that's the first. The, the first, first wife. Yes, yeah. Okay. Okay, Junkin, I think Junkin's the first one. Um, and not prepared for that question. Yeah, so okay. That's okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Then, Roland Howard. That right? sounds a little more familiar. Right. Brother of General O. Howard. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Oliver O. Howard. All right. And Roland is at the Daniel Schaefer house on the Baltimore Pike. Okay. Okay, so that's where we played him. All right. Baltimore Pike, which yes. is down south of town Exactly, here. south of town. Uh, it's a cool yellow house right after the outlets. All right. Oh, right is it still side. there? Lisa, yes, it's still oh, okay. there. Okay. Okay. Uh, Brick, uh, Sickles lost his leg there is a possibility. So the outlets, for those of you looking on the map, the outlets are about here. Right. And then it's just town, we go. You're coming down the Baltimore Pike. Right. And, the, and then, yeah. so as Ken's saying, it's a little bit after the outlets right. in that area. That's the main hospital for Third Corps. Okay. All right. And then, of course, they're going to have several division hospitals. Yeah. I'd like the other corps, you know, they take a lot of casualties. And so instead of having like four farms for hospitals, they're spread out over six or seven farms. Gotcha. Okay, now I don't know how this fits in the family. John Calhoun Chamberlain. <laughs> okay. All right, so Joshua's <coughs> younger name. brother is named after John Calhoun. Yeah. Okay? So, there's got to be some interesting family discussions about that one. <laughs> All right? Okay? All right. Are, are folks still mad at Joshua's dad? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay? All right. Now, we get um, 
two written accounts from Christian Commission. So that tells us what they did. Now go back to them. Now wait, so John John is with the Christian Commission. He's with the Christian Commission. But right? wasn't he also wasn't he with the twentieth Maine physically? Well, he jumps up. Okay, so the hospitals are not that far behind. Uh huh. All right. So he goes and ahead. And so there, you know, he goes ahead and catches up with his two brothers, and they're on I don't know the Hanover Road coming in. Okay. All right. So I mean, the Fifth Corps arrives that way. And so he touches base with them like a day before the battle. Mm. All right. And then when they're going in, he's still hanging around. And Joshua says, you know, mom can't lose all three of us today. Right, right. You need to go someplace else. Yeah. All right. Not realizing that that someplace else is going to be hospital sites right behind the Tawny Town Road in a few minutes. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, literally. Okay? Yeah. And we get uh, Jane Boswell Moore is a nurse. Right. right. So she's with them and she'll write an account. And then Jay Weist and uh, a Marylander, Andrew Cross, writes the official report. All right, so Christian Commission has their own official reports <laughs> all right, okay. of each battle site or each hospital site. And so that's part of it. And, and can you still find those today? Um, I would imagine you can, yeah. yeah. Uh, that would be on uh, National Archives. Them? I didn't really go looking for them. Oh, okay. okay. I've seen one or two quotes from them, so they're out there somewhere. Somewhere, okay. okay? And again, I would think that any of that would, would make it to National Archives. Yeah, okay. All right. Hope. Now it could be. Now, interestingly enough, what we know is a Christian commission then is the YMCA <laughs> right, of so, today. Of today. Yeah. So okay. the Christian commission turned into the YMCA, yes. the Young Men's Club exactly. of America, or right. whatever it is. All right. And then the woman's version, and so on and so yeah. forth. It's fun to uh, stay there. Okay. Now, sanitary commission. All right. Sanitary commission is also founded 1861 in April, and this is Reverend Gordon Winslow. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, as far as I can tell, basically the difference from them is that the Christian Commission is that's going to be very religious, mm -hmm. and the Sanitary Commission not so much. So you've got yeah. you've got the Army has medical with right. it, right? Then and you've got the Christian Commission uh, who's more uh, interested in the souls of the boys. Well, but they're here too. With um, they're going to bring about thirty. I'm sorry, they're going to bring about fifty personnel. I think it's the count. Uh huh. All right. And to so give care, like nurses, doctors and nurses. So, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So. I would think that by this time, it's probably more female than male, but I, I, I'm just guessing. But but they're About also 50. they're right. also catering to the exactly. spiritual needs of the men. Exactly. And then now the sanitary commission, which is a huge, I mean, yes. very important. Exactly. And and their their importance really comes to light now at Gettysburg. Right. right. So, sanitary commission founded 1861. We got a Reverend Winslow, who's the superintendent. All right. Did the did the Confederate Army have the equivalent of any of these. Yes. Okay. All right, but okay, they'll end up being on a state level uh -huh. of volunteers. Right. All right, and and yes, there would be women that followed them. All right, and and I'll give you a prime example. We know that at least twenty women that were nurses came up from Baltimore. Okay. All right, and we'll put them on High Street. Okay. And we don't have their names because if the provost got their names in Baltimore, they would have been arrested. Because they were up here helping the Confederates. Right. Right. Okay. Right, when the so. Confederates had, so the Confederates had hospitals in town. Well, we, we didn't yeah. get there yet. Yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, there. we'll get, get there. there. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So, okay. Um, Relief Lodge. All right. July 4th or 5th, Sanitary Commission shows up with one of its boxcars and it's filled with a tent. All right. So a circus tent. Okay. And the Relief Lodge, well, they're going to serve coffee. And baked goods. Okay. All right. And then just hold that for a second. Coffee and baked goods. And Relief Lodge, you know, if you got a pass from the doctors that said you're okay, well, they would unload the supplies there and and at the train station. And then the wounded would get put on the trains to leave. Uh, All right. And so they got their coffee and baked goods. Donuts. Right there. Well, you know, bread and butter. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, okay. That it's kind not of thing. as exciting okay. as donuts. Well, no, but that, but you bring up a point. That's really, that's very astute. All right. Is so, it? Really? Yes. Oh. All right. So, Relief Lodge. All Thank right. You. Now, another one in town. All right. So, um, Right Run Schoolhouse. All right. So, the schoolhouse in Right Run is no longer there. It was across from where the church is and it was a supply depot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, got that one. Fracken Brothers Store. Frackenbrothers. I'm sorry, Fracken Brothers. Fart Stock. Fart Stock. Frack, okay. Frackens is my name. <laughs> Fart Stock Brothers. Wrong city. There, there's your gaff for today. <laughs> All right. Uh, and um, 
so far the Sock Brothers. Yeah. All right. So the, the 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 supply trains are coming in. Okay. All right. And more useless logistics. All right. It looks like each supply train coming in is four engines and thirty two box cars. Okay. Each engine is carrying eight cars. Okay. All right. They all come in in one one thing, empty out their supplies, load up with wounded, and then leave. All right. So that's how that's happening. And that's all happening over on the York Road where the bridge is. Yeah. All right. Before you get up there, um, the trains are loading. Let's see. Where is it at? Um, it's right like, at the intersection of the Hunterstown yeah. Road. Like the, 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 that, what is that, concrete company there, McDermott? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So that's before Letterman's built. All right, day one, you know, at, or uh, say day one, day one after the battle, right? They're already setting up tents there. Um, is it uh, the the men are just like sitting out in a field waiting to get on the trains? Exactly. Right? There's no station yeah, there. Yeah, no, yeah, there's just hundreds of soldiers with their pass leaning against the railroad embankment, yeah. waiting for their chance to get out Jeez, of here. Jeez, can you imagine? Okay? Yeah. All right, and then um, so they also, uh, interestingly enough, they're strong enough that they sent up a, a hospital. For wounded from Gettysburg, at uh, Carlisle Dick- Carlisle's Dickinson College. Dickinson College up in Carlisle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So there. All right. Eight agents on duty at any given time, fifty through November. So they're telling me exactly what their numbers are. All right. Um, there's a a, a a a photograph at the end that has their medical personnel in it, and we have their names. Mm-hmm. So we got doctors and nurses' names in that, and we'll come back to that one. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right, and then I have their names here. Holston is kind of um, a reverend, but they're calling him Mr. Holston, and he's kind of in charge of the Sanitary Commission. All right, so let's do one more thing with them. Okay. All right. Abraham Lincoln comes here, and he delivers the Gettysburg Address. And he's, there are two copies, all right? Mm-hmm. And, and we argue which copies in his pocket. But he gives them to Hayes and Nicolay, his uh, secretaries. Right. All right. And then Everett Everett's going to come back to him and others, and ask him to write out eventually three copies in his handwriting. Mm. That's the other three copies of the address that exists today. Mm-hmm. Right? They go to a sanitary commission. Sanitary commission raises funds by having these giant fancy flea markets. Okay. All right. And so the three copies over a couple of years, and I'm not sure about the dates, so you can go back and look in. This is not about. This isn't about the Gettysburg Address. Right. Okay. Yeah. They raffle them off. Uh huh. And that's how they raise funds. Okay. Okay. All right. As simple things as girls do pottery and have a pottery table and raffle that off. All right. They do doilies. You know, they're, whatever art and craft thing they can do to raise funds at these fairs, that's how they're raising funds. Okay. All right. And again, so so now here what we got. All right. We have uh, armies doctors here. All right. And we don't have a handle on how many doctors for each corps, but typically if we go and break it down, four for each division at least, at least, uh-huh. right? And so that's 12 to 20 for each corps. Okay. Maybe that's what we have, right? Right. That are in the main hospitals and more. So that, and then we're going to bring maybe 30 nurses, and then the sanitary commission is going to have 30 nurses and the Christian commission is going to have 30 nurses. Okay. All right. So now we're starting so, to, yeah, we're right, getting now. a lot of people now. Exactly. All right. Now we also have to take a look at these people. They're functioning as caregivers, but, um, this becomes a, you know, what they call today a teaching hospital. Yeah. All right. And so all of these women are going to teach all of the women in town how to be nurses. So people are, you know, if, right, because you're getting civilians who are volunteering to help, but they don't know what they're doing. Exactly. So they're learning on the job. Exactly. And they're basically doing what the nurse tells them to do, and yes. that's how they're learning right. how to do it. And there's so many things. Can you, you know, imagine right? that? And one last group, the surprise, right? The HMS surprise? Yeah, that too. Um, coming up the Emmitsburg Road, I think it's the fifth, is a wagon. The wagon's being driven by a priest, and he's got five or six nuns with him. Oh, yes. All right, so Sisters of Charity, if I use that right. Yeah, yeah. Down in and they go to the Catholic Church, obviously, right. on High Street. Yeah. And they volunteer to give care. And the doctors are excited because these 
five or six nurses know what they're doing. And there's a reason for that. The order comes from France. Yes. And the order had been trained in the Crimean War to take care of wounded French and British soldiers. Right. All right, so Split in Emmitsburg and in Philadelphia are veterans of that war from seven or eight years before. And they've taught the other nuns. So uh, unbeknownst to the U.S. Army, they had trained nurses here in the United States before the war started. <laughs> yeah. And they figured that out at Gettysburg. And so they bring more of them. Uh, and again, totals. Is it 40? All right. Um, we do know that they take over the Gettysburg Hotel downtown. And that'll be their headquarters. Okay. All right. Um, it appears that they kind of like send a nun to each of the big hospital sites, all right? And that's not, they don't all go around, but they're doing that. So, for example, the Methodist Church on High Street, we okay. know there's nuns there. Okay. All right. And of course, it's a Methodist church. Right. Right. We also know there's some at the Catholic Church and, and other places that are going to show up. Some are at the Second Corps Hospital. We get these accounts, observations that they're there. So, so is the who is the army sending them to these no, different the, places? No, I, I pretty much think Mother Superior is. Oh, she okay? is. Because you know you have two things, right? Yeah. Um, great quote, <laughs> Sherman. All right, Mother Dix. She, she outranks me. me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, once you you know, if you've ever met a Mother Superior, yeah. okay, <laughs> I don't care what your grade is. Okay, she outranks you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Okay. And the way that goes. Nothing right. tougher than a nun. Exactly. You're Catholic, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. go to Catholic yeah. school? Yes. They still, well, I did. Yeah. They still whacked you back then, right? Oh, yeah. 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 They didn't do that with <laughs> us, but they didn't need to because the the principal huh. was uh, this rotund nun that uh, did not take crap from anyone. Oh. Well, you know, and, and actually, I, I, okay, and side note, okay, I'd rather get there than home, okay? Where? I, I, you know, I'd rather get knocked at, at, at Catholic school yeah. than home. Oh, okay. oh yeah, okay, okay. okay. gotcha. Okay. Dad was a Golden Gloves in World War II. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'd rather okay, the so, nun hit me with exactly, a ruler. <laughs> okay. Exactly, <laughs> right. Now, he did have a bad knee, so if he stayed out of range. <laughs> <laughs> See, eventually you figure out how to beat him, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was just more a survival. Yeah. All right, so, so these are our volunteers, all right? And okay. So this is how this is going to go down, all right? And we're going to start out with the railroad station, all right? Yeah, and so now the, the first hospital in town that was used... Uh, was the railroad station. And we even got a little star here. Look at that, right there. All right, they marked it for me ahead of time. <laughs> right. uh, this is the the map we're using, by the way, is I think it's from Main Street, Gettysburg. It's a tourist it, map. It's a tourist map they get out. And, and to me, it's excellent. And and it's so good for, for uh, doing walking tours in town and explaining to yeah. people. I mean, they, they can associate with this. Yeah, we should uh, we should explain to the viewer that uh, there are. it's very hard to find a good map of Gettysburg, especially 1863 Gettysburg. Yes. So so the best thing that we could find between us is this tourist map. Yep. So there are differences in some of the streets and things here than there were in 1863. But we're just basically interested in showing you blocks at this point. Okay. So go ahead, Ken. All so, right, so here, railroad station. railroad station. It's actually that square there. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Next to and, the star. And, and of course, we can see the railroad tracks too today. Yeah. And today it's one track. Then it would have been three. How how uh, where did the track stop at that point? The um, station? Washington Street. Washington Street. Yeah, go no, Washington here. Street, and you have a couple of parallel tracks so you can do train stuff. Right. And that's a whole other thing. Okay, <laughs> me and trains. <laughs> you, know, you like trains? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh well, that's, that's why it. you and Cam get along so that's well. It. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> do you do a train whistle like Cam does? No, I I I, I, I don't have. Well, Cam's then you don't talents. like you don't like trains that much. <laughs> I, I, my talents just don't reach to those levels. I like no. Few okay. few okay. few people do. That's it. Okay, and, uh, so and here I it is. I have yet to see a llama walking down the street to Gettysburg. <laughs> I've looked, okay? I, I've gotten out. I've been on the streets early dawn and late at night. Okay. And never, I, I, right? No, you never, never find one. Only <laughs> All, right. All right, so back again. So who sets up this uh, All right, so, hospital? Okay, so let's go. Dr. Abner Hand, <clears throat> all right? And so he's Cavalry Division Hospital, right? The day before the battle, the cavalry arrived. Right. And they set up their troops on the ridges north and west of town, right? And with them is, you know, it's Buford's had a long campaign getting here, right? Um, first off, and I always like to make fun of General Buford this time, all right, because he stays at the Eagle Hotel in town. 
Of course. Because right, if generals don't have to sleep in the grass, they don't. Right, of course. Of course <laughs> right. not. Privileges then, of rank. But then right up the street, this really nice house is the um, McCurdy house. And McCurdy is president of the railroad. And so Doc Tan asked him, you know, is there some place to put our wounded? And he says, well, put them in a railroad station. All right, so eight wounded go to the railroad station. And, and that's uh, going to be important. The right. McCurdy house is where? Um, coming up right behind, okay, um, Chambersburg Street. Yeah. All right. And a walking away from the bank, headed toward the 7-Eleven. It's on the left-hand side. It's the prettiest house on the block. Walk, walking away from the bank. Okay, so, so walking from the bank to the 7-Eleven, right? Okay. All right, it's your first house on the left. Um, you're talking about where, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, Food 101 is? No, no, that's a block away. So it start okay. me again. Okay, Chambersburg okay, Street, okay, which okay. block? Gray Bank. The big Gray Bank. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Gray Bank. Okay. All right, okay, mm -hmm. so now turn on to Chambersburg, mm -hmm. all right, and there's a little add-on part of the bank, mm -hmm. and then the next house. Oh, yeah, that is that's a, a nice house. Okay, so that's yeah, on the on the south side of exactly. Chambersburg yes. Street. Yeah. I, I know right. what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, it is a very nice house. Oh, yeah, and and then nice today, too. And his wasn't it his son who saw the Confederates taking candy out of Petey yes. Winter's store yeah, across yeah, the street? Yeah. <laughs> which yes. is which was oh. Mama Ventura's, right? Yeah, okay. That oh, was yeah, the, the candy whole store. Charles McCurdy thing. Oh, he's, he's uh, great. You know, the Confederates arrive on the 26th. Yeah. He gets a hat and a broom and he marches behind him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, he's watching and the stores are opened up. Now, most of the stores are empty of goods because they left by the railroad. Right. All right, but the candy shop still has stuff. And so there's a line of Confederates going and each one's coming out with a bag of candy. <laughs> All right, and now Charles, is he's looking in the window. And, oh, my gosh, the candy's gone. The Civil War is now real to him. <laughs> but if the story is true, the and again, of war. these are Gettysburg stories. Right. All right. If that story is true, the last Confederate comes out, comes out with two bags of candy and gives one to him. Right. All right. And we'll get more from Charles. He's 12 years old at the time of the battle, I think it is. And, and he has an account. It, is, is, he's not the kid who has like a gas pipe that he made a cannon out of as uh, they were as White's troops were coming. Have you heard that story? There's a, a bunch yeah. of men and boys standing down by John Burns' house watching them come over the ridge, uh, White's cavalry like kind of coming over the ridge. Mm. And just before or just as they come over the ridge, this little kid has a cannon and I guess he filled it with powder or something uh, and fired it off. Uh, and uh, he was loading up to do it again, but the older men thought better of it and stopped him from doing it because yes. he didn't want to get fired on. Exactly. I don't know if that story is true which, or not. Okay, I'd have to go back and look. Yeah. But you know, from boys that age, you have um, you have Dan Scully's older. He's eighteen. All right. You have uh, Charles McCurdy. You have Albertus McCreary, right? Yep. Which is um, cousin to the next door neighbor. You know, I mean, we, we can play that game, too. Well, yeah. Right. The second house is the McCreary house. All right. right. Okay. That's right. another show that we yeah. have to have you come on and play that game. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Who, 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 are, who, is, who, who is related to who? Yeah. Right. Okay, that's fun. All right, so All right, um, where we're getting at with this is that, so Abner Hand sets up the hospital there. All right. And we know that what we have here, um, a Sergeant Goodspeed from the 8th Illinois. And this is, what is, this is what's so great about Gettysburg. All right? We have the houses and we have bits and pieces of the stories of what happened to them. Yeah. All right? So 400 houses at a time in the battle. 200 of them are still here today. And then I can take the train station and I can put this wounded um, sergeant from the 8th Illinois recuperating there. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I get another one, uh, private, so look, look, I had to get ahead of myself. So the cavalry's there. Right. right. And now July 1st. All right. And the Confederates are coming from the West and the Confederates are coming from the North. Right. And, you know, Buford holds back the Confederates, sends for reinforcements. Up from Emmitsburg comes two corps. Mm -hmm. Right. And we think that's scary, but it's only about 17,000 men. Mm -hmm. All right. And he places, eventually he places them on the west and north of town, and that's going to be your July 1st battle lines. Right. right? But as we follow this out, the first brigade to arrive is Cutler's. Okay. All right? And they cross over, you know, Reynolds puts them on the ridge, and they cross over the Chambersburg Pike, and they're on the other side where the railroad cut is today. Okay. All right? Now think about this. And then Davis's men come, and Davis's men flank them. And they take, Cutler takes casualties. The railroad, the ties aren't there, 
but the railroad bed is. So that's like a dirt road. Right. And it goes right to the train station. Okay. All right, and so now Cutler's wounded, organized or not, more or not, <laughs> start moving back toward the railroad station. The doctors are here with the frontline troops. They're right behind, mm -hmm. right? And you know, maybe some of their ambulances are still coming with them too. Right? It's kind of confusing about who has whose ambulances here first and when, right? Mm. Because Meade said, don't bring your wagons. Right. Okay, so yeah. I'm not sure about this part of it. Okay. Right? I know 11th Corps has ambulances. I don't know about first. But anyway, the men are drifting wounded. You know, uh, uh, if they got a leg wound, maybe they've tied a, a, a handkerchief around it and they can limp with their gun as a, a crutch. A crutch, yeah. Or, yeah. or they've got an arm wound or something else. And the doctors come back, and so right there today where the Lincoln Diner is, okay, all right, that was the Washington Hotel. And that becomes the hospital site for some of Cutler's men. Okay. We know that the surgeon that's there is... While you're looking, I'll, I'll show it. people on the map where we're talking yeah. about here. So this uh, is the train station we were talking about earlier. And right across the street from it is the Lincoln Diner on this corner right. here. And uh, that's where you're saying the Washington Hotel was? Right. Yeah, Washington Hotel is right where the Lincoln Diner is today. And then here is the whole the that's railroad. That's kind of funny, too. You had medical care before the Lincoln Diner. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, let's see. And so here's the railroad track that we're talking about. At that time, he's saying that this, uh, well, it, he's not saying it. It was. It was just right. a bed. They hadn't extended the track yet all the way out to where it is. I think you said Washington Street yeah. is where it ends. So exactly. it's just right behind there. Yeah. So, um, so this was basically a road that went right off the battlefield into where the hospital is. So right. it's a and, lot easier and, and for the guys. Cutler's men can go right back there. Devin's men can go right back there as well. Right. And so the hospital guy, the, the, the cavalry guys are going back there. Yeah. And then the infantry doctors show up and say, where the cavalry hospital is? Well, right down this, this railroad cut. And so it's it's a Dr. Farley from the 14th Brooklyn. Okay. So red-legged devils. Okay. All right. And, nice. And oh my gosh, his, his work's going to be cut out for him. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, for it sure. Is, right. And so he sets up his hospital site in the Washington Hotel. Okay. All right, so we got that. Got it. All right, so that's him. Yeah. All right, and then comes um, Jacob Ebersol. All right, Jacob Ebersol is the doctor from the 19th Indiana. And that's one of the better doctor accounts for Gettysburg. Oh. All right, and so he comes in. And today, where the little transit, brick transit station is, mm -hmm. all right, Ebersol, right there is the Adams Express office. All right, so don't think Adams County, all right? Uh, think Wells Fargo. Okay, so right, we're talking about right here. Right across the railroad track from the train station. Yeah, and then behind that, ladies and gentlemen, is where the farmer's market is. Exactly. Okay, right? so they okay, were talking so, this area here. Right, and so he'll set up the hospital site there for the Iron Brigade. So we've right. got Cavalry, Cutler, Iron Brigade. Exactly. Okay. All right, and, and then follow this. All right, they established hospitals in three buildings. Yeah. All right, now, I got to think that they thought at that point in the morning that that's all they're going to need for the wounded. I bet they did. All right? Yeah. And how much that's going to change during the course of the day, <laughs> especially for these two brigades. Sure. Oh, right? yeah. The Iron Brigade. Uh, the hospitals, the Iron Brigade ends up spreading all over town. All right, so I'll go into some of their The stuff. hospital does? Yeah. Okay. okay, so their men end up everywhere. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. So initially, let's put their hospital in that location. Okay. All right. Now, with that, um, let's see, in town, uh, Robert Harper's house. Right. So we've got uh, the lieutenant colonel from the 24th Michigan. He's He recuperates there. All right. He lost his leg. Um, What's his name? His, uh, Mark Fanigan, Fanigan. F L A N I G A N. Okay. I got it. I will. If, if, and if, where is it? Give me the opportunity. He's at uh, the Robert Harper House. Which is where? Okay, that's on the square. All right, that's where the Mason building is today. Okay, so right next to the Wills House. Exactly. And uh, so it's just like right in that little area there. Right. Okay, so um, he loses his leg. All right, first set of volunteer, one of the volunteer nurses. All right, wives show up. All right, and mm. so his wife is there to nurse him back to health. Oh, look at him. Okay, all right. Other members of the 24th are there, uh, including a, a Captain Dillon. Now, all right, so we're going to go through that day. I'm going to go through this. 
on the Wills House, and you mentioned that. What the Confederates are going to do is they're going to gather up the wounded officers in town Mm -hmm. that they've captured and their doctors, and they're going to put them in the Wills House. They're not worried about the enlisted enlisted personnel, but those officers can be troublesome. (laughs) Okay. And so they want to keep an eye on those guys. All right. And so they'll use the Wills House. Right. The Confederates, you're saying. Who, who, right. Yeah. The Confederates will put wounded Union officers in the Wills house. Mm-hmm. And that big house is A, hospital, B, prison. Right. I got and it. I got it's it. a prison got hospital. It. Right. All right. So we have that. Um, let's see. Eckin Road. And uh, just bear with me. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. All right. So, Eric, the other okay. day, uh, I was... All right. Uh, Adams Express. Okay, yeah. All right. John Scott House. All right. So, John Scott's house is the Mary McAllister house across from the... Um, Christ Lutheran Church, the college church. Okay, right. right? Okay, so here. So now we go Chambersburg Street. Oh, no, that's okay. York. <laughs> yeah, okay, so there. right here in the first block. All right, so now what happens is during the day, Doubleday shows up. He's taking a different route to get to Gettysburg. Uh-huh. And then his doctors show up. And his doctors then are put at Christ Lutheran Church. Okay. So today when you drive by, you'll see that red flag there. Yeah. All right, okay, so now, uh, again, one building... And they put all the doctors for first corps, second and third division there. Right. All right. Like those guys aren't going to have casualties. <laughs> all right. And so they set up that hospital site. All right. So that's our first hospitals in town. Okay. All right. And that's, so in a, in a just just a, so right. it's in a small little clump here. Right. Right. Not far and, away from each other. Exactly. Which I guess makes sense because if you need to like get something, borrow supplies, right. or something, you know, right. you don't have to go and the far. Wagons are coming there. Yeah. All right. And uh, let's throw in an ambulance. Yeah. All right. So by four o'clock in the afternoon, Mary McAllister on Chambersburg Street. Mm-hmm. All right. And a private Charles McKay on Stratton Street. Okay. Right. Writes that both sides of the streets are filled with wounded from both armies. Jeez. We have the same account from two different people, military and, and civilian, yeah. from different sides of town. Yeah. God, can you imagine that? All right. Both sides. Both sides. But now you have to think this out. All right. Oh, because uh, the because the okay. the line had broken by that point. Sure. Oh, okay. All right. So okay. now we're moving into like four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Oh, what's going to happen here? Yeah. All right. And I'll go through more of that, but I just want to do the Iron Brigade stuff because it becomes so intense because of the high amount of casualties. Sure. Remember that. But uh, so fifty percent. I think it's out. closer to sixty something. Right. Okay. So, but anyway, you know, they're coming. Those, those wounded are coming into town. Yeah. All right. And now they're laying around the streets or whatever they can get from. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and so we get that picture. I think one of the regiments, the from Cutler, one of his regiments uh, stays out at the Kerry Sheets house. So maybe we'll come in that note. They stay there? Yeah, they, they use that as a hospital aid station. Oh, ends, okay. ends up becoming their hospital site. All right. But anyway, back to the Iron Brigade. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. John Scott House. All right. Charles Schaefer's house. Okay. So that's. Um, Schaefer. And that is in the, the second the... block on Carlisle Street. All right? Carlisle up here. I'm sorry. I did that wrong. Chambersburg. <laughs> okay. Second block of Chambersburg. Second block of Chambersburg. All right. Chambersburg. It's a cool, neat gray house. All right. It looks nondescript. All right. Today. Right. All right, so uh, Charles Schaefer is, um, he is the conservative minister at the seminary. Okay. Okay. He'll start the seminary in Philadelphia. All right, so that's his. But it's this nice big house, and so we're going to have wounded Iron Brigade soldiers in that house. Got it. Okay. Then um, amongst them is Colonel Lucis Fairchild from the 2nd Wisconsin. That's what I was okay, thinking he's of, yeah. Lutheran Seminary. Doctors that are there, uh, George New, Abraham Haynes, and A.J. Ward. Again, all First Corps doctors. All right? And so they're at, they're going to be at the seminary acting as an aid station. Okay. All right? Then, Carrie Sheets House, I got it. Um, Third Indiana, Cal- Indiana Cavalry. So again, here we have infantry following cavalry. All right? So... I messed up the command. <laughs> That's okay. I did too. Right. I pulled so, in. the cavalry is at Carrie Sheets' house, and then infantry casualties come there. Yeah. All right. So, we have that. Then, the minister from the 24th Michigan, he'll go around later and visit all the wounded soldiers and write an account. 
and his name is William Way. Okay. Right. So now we can he'll put his guys in whatever houses they're in in town for the duration of the recovery. Right. Um, Jacob Hollinger House. Right. That is where the gas station is east of town when York and Hanover split on the uh, that apex there. Right. Yeah. That odd I think it's thing. a Sunoco now. Right. Yeah. And yeah. All right, so that was where the Hollinger house was. So that's here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, right, right here. There you go. <laughs> yes. Okay. We could have just We could use the map. <laughs> okay. If yeah. only there was a map here for us to use. Well, well right. here it is. Okay. Now, and, and then also these these roads out here, 5th Street, 3rd Street, all that, they weren't here. No, no, no. In okay. fact, uh, farm you, houses. remember you took me out here one time, right across from this gas station, ladies and gentlemen, there's an alleyway. And on the end of that alleyway, you'll see a stone sticking out of the ground. Remember you took exactly. down here? Right. So it's a, it's a rough cut stone. Yeah. All right. And it's typical of property cornerstones of the 1880s and 90s. Okay. All right. And that happens to be about where the boundary of the borough is at one time. Mm hmm And I can find one. That's in the east side. That's one okay? up there. So we'll speculate. All right. And then on the north side on Water Street, which would have yep. been the north side of town in the 1870s or 80s. Yeah. There's also one in the yard there. There's one right on the alleyway that, that isn't marked on this map, but it's right, right here. Exactly, on Water yeah. Street. Yeah. All right, so that's, again, the time frame, all right? At the time of the battle, the borough of Gettysburg is what we call Railroad Avenue today, mm -hmm. all right? And they very, with all this originality, called it North Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so North Street, okay? And so the town grows, and maybe these sh these markers are telling us that that's where the town grew to. Grew right, to. or yeah, that it was time. the borough limits at one time. Exactly. But you're not sure about that. Well, because, you know, we, we can't find it written. The, right, okay. okay. Okay, so what do we know? And we can't find a west and a south, can we? No. Right. All right, but again, those areas are more built up. True. All right, so... True. Um, I would speculate that West was probably on West Street. Makes sense. All right, but West Street today wasn't West Street then. Correct. All right, I think it was, uh, so the, the town grows by a block. Right, and then they push okay. West Street over a block. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right, if I have that one down right. I think it was Franklin. Again, Franklin if, was West if Street If I then. make a mistake on this, I'm sure someone will tell you. I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so another location. All right, so Washington Street. All right, and, yes. and, and I gotta love this. I gotta do one program on Bible names. Lazarus Shobe. Oh, that's okay. a good one. All right, he's passed away, but his house. But that's okay. He's Lazarus. He can come right. back from the exactly. dead. Exactly, he can. And maybe they're counting on it. All right, and his house is here on this corner of Washington and Chambersburg. On the other side, where this big fancy building is today, that ended up being a car dealership. Oh, the the big white building. Yes. Yeah. All okay. Right, so that's where his house was. That's where the uh, the vape shop is, and is really? uh, yeah, and <laughs> okay. there's that sign shop now. It used to be a wine store. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the um right the barn signs or whatever. Yes, yes, okay. the cutout signs yeah, and stuff. So, so that's so anyway, where that is. Yeah. So that's where that was. Okay. All right, and and no, so we know we got armory eight soldiers there. That was oh, a Studebaker dealership, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, modern Gettysburg history, yeah. 1960. <laughs> Gettysburg has two car dealerships. All right, run to them today. A Studebaker dealership and a Packard dealership. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go Gettysburg, go. All right, and then we'll also find some more in the Adams County Courthouse. All right? Uh, so that's down Baltimore Street. Right here. And, and so some of these are recoveries, but we have to take a look at this. When these soldiers are coming off of the field, they're going to any shelter. Sure. You, know, you have civilians yeah. that say, you know, come in come here. Come on in, boy. Yeah, you know, come on in here and, you know, um, I'll get somebody to put a bandage on your wound. Mm -hmm. uh, Nancy Weikert tells the soldier that he'll, she'll sew up the holes in his uniform. <laughs> okay. He's got one, he's, he's wounded in the arm, if the story's right, and there's like 29 holes in his uniform. <laughs> All right, so he's been missed 28 times. All right, that's a lucky dude, if that's true, right? Uh, and, and look, these are in these accounts. You can't make this stuff up. Right, right. Okay? So that sets it up. Okay, so okay? that's... All right, so... That's the end of the first day, then. Now, the, right, do the Confederates so, uh, come in and make hospitals, too, or do they just take well, over the Union hospitals? And that, we're going to cover that street by street. All right, so um, what I find? I can find two houses in town that have accounts that a Confederate officer recover in those houses. Okay. Maybe a third. Okay. All right, because he was actually visiting, all right? Yeah. Um, and we have a situation on Baltimore Street 
where there's a wounded Confederate and he's visiting the house because his father and the owner, uh, the the daughter, the owner of the house, um, went to divinity school together. Oh, okay. Okay, so I mean, he had these strange relationships. Yeah, yeah. Of, of this song. Yeah, that's how um, life goes. But but let's do that. All right. So let's go as we go in the streets. I'm going to point out the buildings that we have no record of. Oh, all right. All right. right. And so, okay. I mean, when you have no record of, what do you mean mean by that? No wounded soldier, Ah. no doctor, no civilian account. Maybe just a line in that building's history that says it was used as a hospital. But but we don't have any stories or details. Exactly. Okay. And there's a couple of buildings there that that catch my eye. Okay. We do that. All right, let's All right, go. Okay, so Oops. what did I do? No, I did it. Okay. No, let's see. Pull the plug. Give me a second here. Okay. I'm just going to plug it yeah, back in. Yeah, turn the lights out. They're throwing me out the door right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So. I got the wire hanging around down here. Okay. All right, hold on. Now. Uh, I'm just going to mark that so I know to cut that out. Okay, but you in the video... You get to see all the sausage being made. Okay, go ahead. All right, so let's go. Okay, now, we're in down. We're on Chambersburg Street, so let's do Chambersburg Street. All right, one of the best accounts in the battle is going to be Mary McAllister. All right? Okay. Uh, and I would recommend, you know, if, if at least see the experts from it, like in um, Gerald Bennett's book. He, he relies on her account, mm-hmm. right? Or find an original her account. Okay. Right? So Mary McAllister. Um July 1st, her and uh, Sally Myers also reports wounded in the street, all right? Nancy Weikert, all right, she's the widow of Peter Weikert. Her father-in-law is the first Weikert in town. Her and her her niece Amanda um, are at their house on um, 55 on the north side of the first block of Chambersburg Street. All right, so that's right. The, the last side. building before, that's over here, the last building before the 7 Eleven. Okay. Okay, it's a storefront today. And, I, oh, you know, and again. Thai restaurant? Um, no, no, I, I don't think so. All right, I'm, now I'm lost. I think it was just one of the shops there. It's the one right before 7 Eleven, right? Yeah, it's the last I think, building. I think that's the Thai okay. restaurant, yeah. So anyway, last building, that's Nancy Weikert. She's okay. the one, um, the, the church, she writes, the churchyard was strewn with arms and legs that had been amputated. Mm. All right, so what's happening here is the first corps doctors set up the hospital site. And where the doors are today, you open the doors, there's several doctors there operating at one time. The doors of what? The Christ Lutheran Church. Cro- okay, Christ Lutheran, got it. Right, in the middle of the block. Yeah. Right? And the window's open, and oh my gosh, I hear everybody telling this story all over the place, right? It happens in two places. The arms and legs are going out the window to create a pile in that alley. Right. Okay. It did not happen any other place in town that there is a written account of. Okay. Okay. The other place we see that is at the Weikert farm in the Tilly Pierce account. Yes. Okay. That's exactly okay, what so I thought we got those Okay. Two, yeah. Right? And, and just so we get this. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Right. We just don't and, have. And, and I would call, we can't, I can't really call the Weikert house <clears throat> a hospital site. It's an aid station. Okay. That's what I'm going to, you know, I mean, it's a big one, all right, and the doctors are doing everything there, but they're going to move those soldiers to other farms away from Little Round Top. Right, right. To recover. Got it. Right? Now, at the same time, you know, one of the areas where the Union soldiers buries their own dead on the days of the battle is that field across from the Wiker House. Mm-hmm. All right, so that becomes a cemetery location. And we have to look at the Elliott map for that. Yeah. For those who don't, the Elliott map you can find online. <coughs> and that is uh, a map with uh, several of the doctors get involved in it. And it is the location where soldiers and horses are buried on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. We question the accuracy in some places, but it, it's the only document we have in sometimes to get this. Yeah. The trick is to match the unit casualty reports and the visuals from the civilians to see what the house is or isn't. Right, right, okay? right. Okay. Point. All right, so we got that. All right, so we're at Christ Lutheran there. Okay. Now, on the same block. Same block. All right, is the Dr. Horners. I, I said that, that's plural. All right, so 51 is Dr. Robert Horner and 47 is Dr. Charles Horner. So, it, so both of these brothers... Their dad was a doctor in town. So this north side? North side. Yeah. All right. Where the marker is for Thaddeus Stevens. Oh, okay. The blue marker. Yeah. Okay. 
their dad buys the property from Thaddeus, right? And as they become adults, they open up their practice. So you got two brothers with doctor offices next to each other. Uh huh. Okay, okay. Competing and, horners. Well, I mean, are they competing? Are, are, I don't know. Okay. Um, you know, is it uh, one's a surgeon and one's internal medicine? Right. One does arms, they, one does legs. You go to one first and send you to the other one. Right, you know, and and, and are the wives talking? I don't, it's just, <laughs> I, I, all this stuff is like speculation. All right. right, sure, All right, course. so what do we use these houses for? All right, we use those houses. Um, so Dr. Robert Horner, all right, north side, Daddy Stevens' house, 51. Right. Yeah. Um, now wait. Hey, just I'm okay, sorry. To, uh, just for the okay. audience's sake, um, we're talking now. We're after the battle at this we're point. We're after the battle. Right. All right. Okay. So, so uh, or at least after July first. Right. Okay. All right. So uh, that night, the Confederates control the town. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they're going to control all the way down to the Rupp House. Yeah. On Baltimore Street. Right. All right. They're going to control all the way down to the hospital site on Washington Street. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's the kind of the battle lines in between the two. And then everything is going to, you know, the houses are going to fill up with wounded. Right. All right, unless there's too much fighting around that house. Yes. All right, so with that said, we're on Chambersburg Street, and, and now we're going to talk about whatever happens on Chambersburg Street during the battle and afterwards. Okay. All right, and that will we'll do the town by streets. Okay. Okay, so what's going on here? Robert Horner becomes a civilian contractor for the Army. All right, so he's a volunteer. All right, um, Cornelia Hancock. All right, a famous Civil War nurse. She stays at his house. No relation to the general. No. Okay. Not as far as I can tell. All right, um, Elizabeth Farnham. All right, now here's a sad story. Oh. All right, she turns his into turns his house into a mini depot for Second Corps. She's a Second Corps Army nurse, Dix. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, now. I have to go back. I think in my notes, she dies a couple of months later from, if I got it right, from typhoid. Okay. All right, so I think she's the one. I didn't put it down here in my notes for today's program, but I think she's the one that happens to. All the casualties aren't here. Okay, so let's talk about nurses, right, and civilian casualties. If you volunteer in one of these hospital sites at Gettysburg, and a couple of months later, you die of typhoid, and you're not an army nurse. Your casualty doesn't get counted. Mm. And so that's what's messing up some of these totals for civilian casualties and why our totals keep growing. Mm. Because now we, we're seeing that, you know, again, all of the army casualties aren't from bullets. Right, right. Okay. And, and so the civilian casualties are the same. Mm. And we watch mm. this. And as you know, we see the sadness in some of these accounts where people that are helping out die later. Yeah. And maybe I'll point out one or two if I have them. Okay. Right? Okay. All right. So, uh, Dr. Charles Horner, all right, and he is at 47. And if I'm not mistaken, he kind of gets drafted, all right? And and so the Army, um, he's going to be, no, that's just what right. Um, he ends up helping out at First Corps Hospitals. Okay. All right. And so that's going to be the seminary. Right. So his brother's getting paid and he's not. All right. His brother is a civilian contractor and he's not. Sure. His brother is booked for 90 days. Okay. All right. You know, that's not like really volunteering. <laughs> pretty much told this is what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Voluntold. Yes. <laughs> In 19... <laughs> those houses on Chambersburg Street, all right, the, um, uh, the restaurant at the Yellow House there, is it? Gettysburger, uh, across from the church. Gettys, yeah, Gettysburg. Okay, so that's Bell King's house. Yeah, okay. Bell King, and then um, Mary McAllister's the Blue House, and Martha Scott's the Blue House, and Nancy Weicker's on the end. Okay, all right. That's the church ladies. Still you know the ones there, that yeah. make, you know, the pies for Sundays for the bake uh-huh, sales. Yeah. All right. So now they're making food for the wounded. Okay. All right. They have wounded company officers in their houses, and they're making food for the church. All mm. right. So that's followed so far. This is what we've already said. The church is the hospital site for 2nd and 3rd Division. All right, that's where the surgery is. Also, they're going to use that as a uh, um, ward. Okay. Ward's the right term. Enlisted personnel. The tan house to the left, that house is going to be used for wounded personnel. Okay. All right? And now we have people making food. 
We have lieutenants and captains staying in houses up at the nice, pretty railroad house. <laughs> Who's staying there? Well, it's got to be colonels, colonels and, up. and generals. Yeah. Okay. Including Isaac Trimble, Confederate general, uh-huh. is there for a while. Oh, all right. He's in McCurdy's house. All right. Now, not that this would happen, but Isaac Trimble was the chief engineer for the B&O Railroad. Yeah. All right. And that's, you know, um, drafting, building, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Sure. Right. Yeah. And Charles McCurdy is president of the Gettysburg Railroad. Right. All right. Okay. So the Gettysburg Railroad pretty much goes from Hanover to Gettysburg. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the B&O Railroad pretty much goes from Baltimore to Ohio. Uh, okay. So maybe. I see where you're going. Okay. okay maybe somebody's <laughs> trying to get a job after the war. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's just professional okay, I, courtesy, professional courtesy, or a coincidence. You know, if you got an opening, I'm good for an upgrade. <laughs> right, you know, listen, right. if this whole war doesn't work <laughs> out, yeah, 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 that whole thing. All right, um, and so now we so, have. So, so I think what the picture that you're trying to paint right. here is that there is a complex. Uh, uh, yeah, of, okay, so so it, basically, like what we would have in a hospital today. Everything, the food, everything, all that stuff in one building, it's It's now spread spread out on a block. Exactly. Right. right. And and it's interesting, uh, PBS Mercy Street kind of started to show this a little bit, all right, but not as much. You know, the officers are separated from the listening personnel, all right. Now we have doctors and nurses staying at the Horner's house, so we have barracks or billets, right? right? Then down at the end of the street, we have Dr. Huber's house, all right? Sad story. His son is killed at the Seven Days Battles, right? I he, he goes down with a horse and buggy and picks his son up and brings him back and buries him in Gettysburg. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. And um, his son is buried in Evergreen Cemetery back on the right-hand side, all right? And you'll be able to tell that tombstone because it's broken half. It was damaged during the artillery fight on July 2nd. Ah, and when McConaughey, president of the cemetery, said to Hoover, yeah, I would like to, uh, or would you like to have us replace the stone? We'll replace it for you. Right. And Hoover says, no, I don't want that. I want people to see how terrible war is. Good. Right? Yeah. So Hoover's house, July 1st, Confederate artillery knocks the corner off his house. All right. That is, again, that same corner of Washington and Chambersburg. And now we are on... And I'll do it right. The southeast side. Southeast over here. Right. So, so that's it's the a beer place. It's today. the beer place today. Mm-hmm. Look at the top at the windows. Mm-hmm. All right, and notice that the brick is two different colors. On the, are we talking on the side or the front? Both. Oh. All right, because Confederate it's artillery. The corner. Confederate artillery knocked off the corner at the top of the house. <clears throat> Interesting. All right, and I think the way the um, it, it, it's two or three windows. He said yeah. he had to replace two or three windows, but now he can't use the house for a doctor's office. How many doctors are in town? Four. Four civilian doctors. But it's county seat, so that makes sense. Uh Uh-huh, sure. And he can't use this, but you can use it for a morgue. Uh Oh. All right, so now think about this, right? And so now you have a surgery, you have a commissary, you have a morgue, all right? And so the whole street is interlinked, all right? So we can use the word complex, and nobody's used it before. I don't, you know, and, and I'm not... You know, okay. but they're all working together, all right. And so, like Mercy Street, the whole street is the hospital. Is it, this is, you're, you're saying that you've observed from your observances, yeah. You've you kind of see it as a complex. No, right. no, no one has officially called it that, right? And but you, this, you're just saying ORs, this is what. It, all right, but all the letters say that that these girl, these women are bringing food across the street. All right, that they're taking the bodies down here to, to be have them embalmed. All right, and do we see this replicated in other parts of every, town, or is it just here? Every street, every street. So they're okay, doing. So I'm gonna when I go through, I'm gonna find out to one degree or another how much that's happening on each street. Okay. All right, but again, remember that part of this is being set up by the best doctors in the first corps, and when the Confederates overrun the town, they're captured, so they're staying there. All right. Now, next door to Christ Lutheran Church, Dr. Hill's house, brick house, white shutters, big yellow sign on it for something. To the left or to, to the um, right, if you're looking uh, at the to church? To the west, if you're looking at the church to the right. To the right, okay. Dr. Hill's house. Right. Now, if I have it right, Dr. Hill has two doctorates. Hmm. Doctor of Theology, minister at the church. Mm-hmm. Doctor of Dentistry. Oh, boy. Okay. 
<laughs> now, again, as I mentioned earlier, um, this is 1863. Right. Folks still think anesthesia is a girl's name. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. And so, 1850s, and you go to see him for a toothache. <laughs> That molar has to come out. Let us pray. Right. That's all you got, folks. That's all you got. All right. But they'll use yeah. that nice big house as a supply depot for First Corps. All right. So whenever their supplies come in from the Farnsworth house, for, I'm sorry, Fauna Stock house, yeah. Fauna Stock store, get it right, Ken, then they'll move their supplies there. Okay. Okay. So First Corps supplies on one side of the street, Second Corps on the other. Okay. All right. And so now we've got, we painted that picture of everybody working together and you know, that's all kind of happening around there, all right? So we got that. That's Chambersburg Street, all right? Carlisle Street. Well, Carlisle Street, we've got McConaughey's Hall, all right? And that's where the Gettysburg Time Building is today, all right? So that's what, right so here? It's like, yeah, right about there, yeah. right behind the pub. Right, okay? And so McConaughey's Hall is there. No record of wounded in this nice big building. Building even has a laundry, hmm. all right? And, and so that's suspicious to me. All right, so that's one of the locations that's suspicious. Washington Hotel, I mentioned that. Spangler's Warehouse. We know that somebody says all the warehouses are filled with wounded. So I'm going to assume with that one line that's talking about the warehouses around the train station. Because right? I really don't see warehouses anyplace else in town. Right. They're all right around here. And we even have pictures of one or two of them that still exist yeah, today. Yeah. So that's amazing that that happens. Yeah. The building stone. Right? Um, then we see Nellie Augenball. Right? And Nellie Algenball is 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And she writes an account. Uh, she ends her account that her, one of her best friends was Jenny Wade. Right? Uh, part of her story, won't go too deep into it, she stays at the hat shop. She's a Milner apprentice, making a hat on July 1st. It's Mrs. Mary Martin. Right. And mm -hmm. then she's down on Carlisle Street, and she watches the fighting on Carlisle Street. Right? She'll see the hat she worked on again. On July 4th, she'll see it leaving town on the Confederate side. Okay? <laughs> but then her sister, I'm sorry, her cousin, her cousin is a nurse at the Weikert Farm. Mm. And, of course, that's the Tilly Pierce story. Right. Right. And she writes a couple of things. One thing is it's her cousin that tells Nellie that the Louisiana troops, right, they eat gunpowder before the battle, and that's why their bodies turned black in the July heat. <laughs> and that's in her account. You gotta love this stuff. Yeah. Okay. You gotta love this stuff. All right. Um, so she she lives where the Mexican place is now, right? Right. There was um, right on the corner here. Well, the, the corner house is a warehouse. Oh, okay. And so she's like where the tattoo parlor is. Oh, that's all right, right stuff. next to it. Now again, basically. these houses don't exist. Right. right. What happens here is that in the 1880s and 1890s, the college grows leaps and bounds. And so all these houses that get built up on these streets north of town are all college related. Oh. Right? And if you really got got into it, you could actually tag professors that are living in a that, house when it's built. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, you can really get that far in some of this stuff. That's, uh, that's far. Um. <clears throat> So okay, so Nellie is is and she's not in her house. She's, she's yeah, she's in her house. She's in her house, right? And that is the tattoo parlor. Okay, all right. She writes getting a tattoo, right? Yes. Okay. Um, some of the things from her, no food was left in the garden for the family. Uh -huh. All right, that goes for all the civilians. Yeah. All right, they, the soldiers have taken the food. They've given the food to the wounded. Now the trains have to get through. The civilians don't get food until those trains start arriving on the fourth and fifth. I think I read somewhere. I can't remember which boy it was, but it was one of the boys, one of the Charleses or someone who said uh, something that the, I guess it would be the Christian Commission when they came in with water. Yeah. Uh, like it basically saved everybody because all the wells were either ruined or dry. You know, and what's going to happen, it rains on July 4th and 5th, mm. all right? And, and think about this. Everybody knows that Cemetery Hill is a Union Hill. But that hill on Baltimore Street, I kind of call that the Confederate Hill, yeah. right? And when this yeah. is all over with, there's a couple hundred dead bodies there that we know for sure mm -hmm. in that area, right? Excuse me. When it rains, all that crud... <laughs> washes downhill. Oh, God, yeah. All right, and we know today around the little blue fence next to the Rupp House is one of the town wells. Yeah. All right, and one of the highlights of visiting the um, the Farnsworth House is the stream running through. Yeah, yeah. Right, and Weinbretter Run. 
And that's the water supply for south of town. Hmm. And so that's the water supply for the wounded that are there. That's the water supply for the civilians. So it's not, to me, it makes perfectly sense that they start dying. Sure. You know, based on the crud that's there. All yeah. Right. Uh, what else from Nellie before we move on? Um, she'll talk about, she says, uh, July 4th, it rained so hard the streams ran red from, with blood. <laughs> oh, my, my next quote, right? I, I, next quote after that. <laughs> A large tent at the hospital. All right. Um, around the seminary, they set up tents. And all the women and girls become nurses. Um, I already mentioned the uh, the Confederates, the, Louis, uh, the Louisiana Tigers. Her husband's a nurse there. So, she also notes that Southerners start showing up at Gettysburg. They're taking trains or whatever they can get to from Maryland or Virginia, looking for the bodies of their loved ones. And they're not permitted access to the hospital sites unless they take the oath. Oh. Okay? So she writes that in her account. So that's great. All right. Um, some are very bitter. Um, Nellie, about to faint, gives a basin to um, a woman searching for a sweetheart. All right? The wounded patient was the person that Nellie was working with. Okay. So literally, the, the woman comes in asking for this soldier, and Nellie's just done with the war space with him is going to fall over and it's the exact like, soldiers oh it's right over there exactly yeah all right um and so that does it mccurdy house uh warehouse it says all the warehouses mccurdy had one sheets had one spangler has one um alexander ivy seven wisconsin he's staying in one of those he watches he's still here for the gettysburg address okay he, says, right, so he, he stays that whole time he's, he's wounded on july 1st and he's still here on July 7th. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry, on November... November 19th. November 19th. Yeah, South close. Wisconsin, right? Okay. <laughs> um, also in that area is Peter Berg's 24th Michigan. Um, a Reverend George De, um, Dunfield from Detroit. So again, an account. And then, um, so Jacob Sheets' house, right? And that's on 249. Ja now, it was Jacob Sheets' house, was that there back then? Um, okay, so... You're talking Colonel Sheets. Or that's yeah, Colonel Sheets' house. That's that wasn't there. That wasn't there. All right, but you're talking a, Jacob Sheets, 1863. Jacob Sheets. Okay, and his house is one of the houses on Carlisle Street around where Nellie's is. So again, all those buildings, ah. North Avenue. There's 12 buildings. None yeah, of them yeah. exist. Okay. All right. So that's gotcha. it. All right. So that's the Jacob Sheets' Sheets' house. Uh huh. All right, and you know he'll lose. Um, he loses a son and three grandsons in the war, and two more die of wounds after the war. Okay, so that's... Uh, that's Jacob, uh, Peter's family. It's a big yeah. price yeah, that he exactly. paid. Yeah. yeah, Peter, I'm sorry, Peter. Jacob's is Peter's son, so it's Jacob's brother. Jacob's Jacob, brother. Jacob Sheeds, and Jacob is Carrie Sheeds' dad. Right, okay. ja right. Okay. Uh, and Peter is Carrie's brother. Uh, uh, also, same of, well, same name of the grandfather, too. The, right, so so, it's, no, it's, so it's, Jacob's it's, father is Peter. Right. And one of his sons. And his son is Peter. Right. And then his daughter's Karen. And, and look, that drives people crazy. All right. The McClellan House downtown. Right. All right. Which the nuns are going to take over. Right. Yeah. To use as yeah. a base. Mm -hmm. All right. God. His name is John McClellan. His son's in the army, John McClellan. His son was, his grandson was born on 26, John McClellan. All right. <laughs> the guy that built his ancestor, that built Black Horse Tavern, was yeah. named John McClellan. <laughs> Right. Listen, in some families, if it ain't broke, don't fix <laughs> that's it, you it, know? That's it, that's okay. it, okay? So Carlisle and Chambersburg, so you okay. see, get that picture. So we got um, that. Okay, and now, um, all right, so let's come back over here to, to Christ Lutheran for a second, all right, and, and a couple of names that are on Chambersburg Street. Um, Dr. Norquist is the first core medical doctor, and he's at Christ Lutheran Church on Chambersburg, all right? He's got patients, again, from 2nd and 3rd Division. 13th Mass., all right, um, 80th New York, 90th Pennsylvania, 97th New York, 151st Pennsylvania. All their wounded are in that area. All right, now we get, okay, so here's an odd guy. Dr. Edward Parker, 15th Massachusetts, Harvard graduate, all right? He's not there as a doctor. He's been wounded. He's a patient Oh. in one of the houses, right? Interesting. Um, Martha Eiler, she's a nurse there for five weeks and writes an account. Um, Margaret Ziegler, they use her house for wounded soldiers. Overflow from the church. And this is still on Chambersburg Street? It's still on Chambersburg okay. Street. Again, for that whole picture. Again, wounded. Let me see if there's a Jenny McCreary. Um, oh, Dr. William Osborne from the 11th PA. 
He's helping his colonel. His colonel is Colonel uh, Gabriel Paul. Oh. And he's blinded during the battle. That's right. Okay, so Brigadier General then. Uh, Jenny McCreary, what she writes, end of her letter. Tis not the same quiet old place as it was. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dr. Talk Edward Talk about Parker, an understatement. Um, okay, so 15th Mass, he recovers. Edgar Parker, no more military after the war. Right? He becomes a painter. Huh. All right? So he's, I don't even know if he's practicing medicine. Right? But President Hayes hires him and he paints three portraits for the White House. And Adams, Jefferson, and Madison, those portraits are from Dr. Edward Parker, who is in the McCreary house recovering from a head wound. Huh. Right? Um, Colonel Samuel Leonard, shot in the arm. He's there. Right? Um, and that pretty much covers that one. Washington Street. Right? First off, we have three places in town where we know soldiers were buried. Fourth, if you want to use Evergreen Cemetery. All right, so let's follow this on Washington Street. Across from the 7 Eleven is a dorm complex. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's three buildings, but it's one dorm, really. All right, and it's called the Ice House Complex. At the time of the Battle of Gettysburg, that was a Presbyterian cemetery. So then we're talking right here. Right. On Washington Street, across from the 7-Eleven. Right. right. Or is right it there. over here? No, it's over here. Yeah, it's over here. It's right by the train station. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right, that's that alley yeah. that's there. And um, and so, you know, all the soldiers at Christ Lutheran, they don't make it. And so they're going to go to Dr. Hoover's house. And then they're embalmed or made ready. And then they're buried in the Presbyterian Cemetery. And then over the six months, over the winter, they're going to be recovered and moved to the National Cemetery. Down yonder ways. Right. So um, that's one location where we know that soldiers were buried in town. Wasn't, that's wasn't Mary Virginia put there, too? Um, no. She's going to be on the other side of town. All right. And Where is that? Okay. So she is, first off, she's buried. Oh, she's up at the. In a, yeah, Mary Virginia Wade. She's buried in her sister's backyard. But yeah, right. All right. And then after Christmas, She's moved to the German Reformed Church. The German right. Reformed Church right. over right. on High Street. Right. And I got to go more. I don't know that they used that cemetery. That the Because uh, there's no cemetery there now, is there? No, but there were two then. So they moved those as well. Right. Okay. And there's a couple more places where there were cemeteries in town. Yeah. But again, I got to go with what I have records for. Right. I have records that soldiers were put into the Presbyterian Cemetery. Right. Okay. Right. So we're back. Now, over down here. by the hospital. Okay. Down by the hospital. Okay. okay. All right. And so we get... Um, let's Which is see. Here. Here's the hospital. Yeah, here's the hospital. Here's Washington Street. All right. And then for our picture right here. All right. So on this side. This is Long Lane. Yeah. Okay. So right here, this last block of Long Lane. All right. The burial map shows uh, a dozen or so Georgians buried there. Yeah. So a Confederate burial site there. So when you go running around the wreck park or rollerblading, um, yeah. Georgians were once Right. Or just throw up by the sidewalk. Yeah. yeah. Where is it? Uh, uh, closer, <clears throat> I think closer to the sidewalk. All right, but now the Long Lane's roadbed has been moved when they built Camp Colt. So I know it's off. So now I always wondered, I know that it's moved further down, like because the original Long Lane goes behind the houses right. now. But was that, uh, so the current Long Lane is all moved, or was it just that? certain uh, part of it like did it did it go more uh, at an angle yeah it, it, into the it, original it connects here so we know that's on the road yeah i mean we know that connects into so that's how we can get the high street uh-huh right by that way yeah so anyway it's, it's in that virginity vicinity virginity okay, okay. Yeah, there we go <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. it's All in right, that so, virginity area yeah that's right in the vicinity of that area yeah okay uh, again now, every once in a while the baltimore stuff comes in <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, All right, so but your point is you got Georgians right, buried out here right, in the rec park. Right, and so um, as we go to York Street, all right, and so over here where the train station, I mean where the uh, fire station is, uh -huh. all right, we know on the map that Amos Hubbison was initially buried there because we didn't know his name. Right. All right, uh, with six others, probably also from the 154th. Right, okay. Um, is that right? 154th, New York. I don't um, remember. So yeah, I think that's right. Was, I think yeah. so. It was a hundred something. But yeah, Eric yeah. says yes. All right. So um, here's here's I got a picture of uh, Amos. Right. 
Right, this is him, no? Yes. Yeah. All right. So there's Amos. Can't tell it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Handsome right, so. devil. And then here are his children. Where is it? Look at that. There, I see him. Okay. Now, uh, all right. His location is, is right there in the yard of the fire department. Yes. You know, where the monument is today. There's a monument to him. Today. And I think that the burial map has seven bodies there. All right? Okay. And then you know the last place. Um, let's see what I do. I did. Washington uh, Presbyterian Cemetery, um, the hospital site, and the fire station, and then of course you get Evergreen Cemetery. Evergreen Cemetery, they bury you know hundred soldiers there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. and, and yeah, yeah. There, there um, Elizabeth Thorne did that with some help. Right, Washington Street. Right, so we're on Washington right now, and the corner of Washington and High Street. Here and so. On this side, this corner, is Catherine Foster's house. Okay. Right? And pretty exciting account. All right? I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on hers, but I'm going to mention one or two things. The short story on her is she's 47 years old. Right? She watches the battle from her back porch. She goes in her basement. The Confederate artillery knocks that porch off. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. We believe, or it's said that her house was the most shot up of any house in town by artillery. Interesting. And so repaired. All right. Now, you got to remember, too, that some of these folks want to totally repair things so there's no sign of damage. So they're that anti-war. All right? Right. And she should be. She has seven male cousins in the Army and loses four of them over a year. Jeez. Okay? Um, so she's lucky and unlucky. Yeah. All right? Okay? Unlucky stuff, Gettysburg. Right, but she v- survives Gettysburg, so lucky. Right, when her parents pass away, she moves to Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Oh. All right, and she also she's there for the flood, and she survives the flood. Wow. All right, so she's a survivor. Yeah, for sure. super lucky. Okay. okay, she's hiding a Union soldier in her basement. One of the best stories about her: the Confederates are searching her house. Right, they've literally um, put the soldier in the potato bin. And put his black knapsack and belts in the coal bin. Huh. And then they have those big skirts on. And they stand in front of the bins and, and tell the Confederates, there's, you know, I think, paraphrase the Confederates, uh, yes, we're looking for Union people. And she says, well, we're all good Union people here or something. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Um, and, and so she kind of like blows off the North Carolina captain and he leaves. Right. And then there's a knock at her door. Right. And at her door is Dr. Hurd of Boston and Dr. Bach of Philadelphia. Those are Reynolds' doctors. Uh-huh. That's his private doctors on his staff. And they got caught behind the lines. All right. And so now they have a pass from the Confederate provost. And they're going to board at her house. So think about this. Now we got boarding. Okay. All right. And they're going to work on the soldiers at the Presbyterian Church and the Catholic Church on the street. So they're so they're they're working as doctors right. with the Confederate the Army, you know, right. up the street exactly. and everything. Exactly. Taking care of both Union and Confederate right. uh, wounded. Um, right. and, and they'll they'll be staying at her house right. when they get some shut eye. All right, and now across the street is the new bed and breakfast, Miss Eister's Ladies Academy. Over here. Okay? Yeah. On the other side, the big yellow house. Yeah. All right. Now what do we get for notes for that? It says that it was used as a hospital, and that's it. That's it. All right. Again, it's big not enough. Patient. Oh, it, it's the excellent, excellent choice. Yeah. Was, oh, careful. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have warned you about that. That uh, <laughs> thing is a death trap. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. That's it. We'll cut that part out. Okay. There you go. As, okay. <laughs> Some will say Ken fell off his high horse. <laughs> It's about time we knocked Ken off his high horse. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Isis Ladies Academy. Yeah. No record. I mean, I can't think of a better place, even though there's fighting down the street, to use for wounded. Sure. All right, so let's let we do that one. Solomon Powers House. All right, now, um, some of that house still exists, and that is the northeast corner. Northeast corner. Okay, so we're still in that corner uh, of Washington Street. Over here. All right, so we got... Um, we got Eister... And then the first lady you said. Right. right. Uh, Catherine, um, Catherine Foster. Foster. Eister. And then the 
would have been a, a yard and a house. If you look at the back, you can see which part is house and which is the addition. Yeah. All right. And, and is that, that the apartment? That, it's apartments now, like Zen's so, yeah. apartments well, or something? Well, you know, it's a whole thing. There's that guy in a red shirt again in, our, in the alley looking at our backyard. <laughs> hey, <laughs> What's yeah. he doing? <laughs> I see you there all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so in Solomon Power's house, yes, he has 14 to 16 patients. Um, the Powers family, they demonstrate a real, uh, this is a quote, they demonstrate a real talent for nursing. They're nursed by Cynthia Powers Pinterhoff. All right, if I got that right. All right. Also is there is Elizabeth and Catherine Sweeney. They stay at the Powers house during the battle. Okay. All right. Lizzie helps with the wounded at St. Francis Xavier. And Catherine, they help with the wounded at the Powers house. One of these wounded there is Private George Engel of the 143rd Pennsylvania. All right, so that's Washington Street, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump onto High Street for there. All right, High All right. Street. All right, so follow this out. Okay. On another time, right now I've got five different what I'll describe as firefights on Washington Street. Okay. And one of them, Doctor Jacob's son Henry, is watching out of his basement window, mm. and North Carolinians shoot down the color guard of the 150th Pennsylvania. North Carolinians captured that flag. That's happening right there at Powers Stone Yard. Right in the street. Okay. Okay. Now, we get other fights there and we go into it later on. Um, Dilger sets his guns in Washington Street. The 45th New York uses the Eagle Hotel as an Alamo for an hour or two. Mm, Down mm. the street, the 6th Wisconsin forms a battle line about where the hospital is, I'm guessing. And... Um, the 119th New York, my heroes, all right, they they take over Tommy's Pizza Lot and they're not giving the pizza to the Confederates. Okay. <laughs> they're standing their favorite firm pizza. There. They're standing firm like, right there. We hear this is the best pizza in town. Okay. okay. Now, for the 150th to lose their color guard yeah. with the North Carolinians right on top of them, that tells me that most of the 149th and the 143rd have gotten down the street. Okay. All right. Now, this becomes interesting. That's the Bucktails. Yes. All right. And, um, you know, those are the best shots in a couple of counties in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. All right. And they're spread out from Lebanon, Lebanon, Pennsylvania to Pittsburgh. Right. All right. It's where they're coming from. All right. Now, follow me on this. All right. Once Christ Lutheran is filled up on Chambersburg Street, there's too many men. And so they, Dr. Norquist, goes down to the Presbyterian Church on High Street. All right, that's where the Methodist Church is today. And across the street from the Catholic Church. All right, so we're on East High in the middle of the block. Oh, East? Yeah, East High in the middle of the block. I'm sorry, West Side in the middle of the block. Side, yeah. West High. Sorry, West High. All right. And, all right, so this is how this is going to turn this out. Peter Meyer's house. There's a yellow house there with a blue door. Sally Myers lived there. She writes an account. Okay. Right? Okay. 14 patients. Sergeant Alexander Stewart. Right? 149th Pennsylvania. Bucktail. Now, you know, the rest of the story is that Sally is going to marry his brother. Oh. All right? Yes, But yes, Bucktail yes. dies in the house. <clears throat> Private Andrew Croc, 149th PA, helps Stewart off the field. Captain Bruce Blair lost left arm and was ha um, and was left-handed. All right, so that's terrible. Yeah, I'm left-handed. That's terrible. But he's on that street in one of the houses, probably Sally Myers' house. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got Bucktails who were fighting on Washington Street, and now we're going to stretch that, and now they're staying in the houses on Washington Street. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, All right uh, Lieutenant Colonel Henry. Um, his arm, he's uh, 150th Pennsylvania. Henry S. Hudikoffer. Oh, man, I'm getting, killing these Hudikoffer. Names. Yes. He loses an arm. All right. Also Should on the street name. is um, Major Thomas Chamberlain, 150 PA, Union County. That's where he's from. Um, William Sheriff, 142nd Pennsylvania. Charles Decker, 142nd Pennsylvania. And I'm going through these. Um, Private A.R. Whitney. Oh, okay, let's try this one. <laughs> okay. Win, W I N T A, mute. Went to mute. Went to uh, mute. All right. He's from Wilkes Bar. All right. But what I'm showing you here is, and there's some, a couple others, some Vermonters and some other Pennsylvanians, but we've got all these bucktails now occupying these houses 
on West High Street. Right. All right. They are in the Powers House and they are in the Myers House. Mm -hmm. All right. Their doctors are now up at St. Francis Xavier. Mm -hmm. Right. So follow me on this. There's too many wounded on Chambersburg Street. So they move over to the Presbyterian Church in the center of High Street. No longer standing. That yeah. overflows. Okay. And so then they go across the street to the Catholic Church. Okay. All right. And so now that's where the Bucktails doctors are. Okay. All right. As we follow that out, or at least that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Right? Yeah. Okay. And and um, Dr. James Fulton, 143rd Pennsylvania, he's in charge at St. Francis Xavier. Right. Bucktails doctor. Okay. All right. Um, the dead were placed in the basement of St. Francis Xavier, mm. a morgue. It's a cement cold basement. Mm -hmm. All right. So like using another location on Chambersburg Street for a morgue. Now, again, this street gets a morgue. So every street's okay, getting okay. a morgue, yeah. Now, on the Myers house, the Power Sisters, all right, and a couple other houses that were there no longer standing. Okay. All right. So one of the descriptions says, the lady in the house next to the church is making food for the wounded. Okay. All right. So now again, question. we have the same thing. All right. We've got the ladies, you know, the church ladies. Yeah. All right. Making food for the wounded. Uh huh. All right. So let's put this whole picture together again. Okay. All right. We have boarding space for doctors. Mm -hmm. All right. We have a surgery. Yeah. All right. We have the Catholic Church and the Presbyterian Church used as a, a ward. Right. We have ladies making food mm -hmm. for the wounded in those houses. All right. Uh, we have a surgery at the Catholic Church. Okay. Probably moved around. All right. Yeah. So um, let me see something. So now we've got two blocks that right. are. Right. And then here we get this follow. A friend of mine finds um, in a flea market in Leaven, Pennsylvania. Right, and finds a two pictures, right, and the pictures are signed by Doctor So and So. All right, and the name escapes me right now, but I want to tell the story. Okay. Not very important. All right, um, and one picture he writes. She takes them home, and she notices on the back because she buys them in a plastic envelope because the guy wants to sell the picture. There's pencil writing on the back, and for the Christ Lutheran Church, it writes that. On July 1st, a Confederate soldier helped me up the steps. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then on the back of the picture of St. Francis Xavier, right? Um, I was here when General Longstreet came and used the tower of the church as an observatory. Oh. And no, it wasn't Longstreet. All right. So, you know, there. Um, you know, confused because maybe that officer's got a lot of braid on him. Uh -huh. And young officers tend to do that. Sure. Custer. Hey, Custer, yeah. I love Custer. <laughs> me too. <laughs> He's one of my favorites. Yeah, me too. Okay. Um, he also writes that the next day the priest came and played music for the wounded. Okay. Right. Now, um, we go through this and it, it takes help from uh, especially um, John Heiser, right? And he's actually to break through this because we're trying to find this guy. And he's not a doctor for the Christian Commission. And he's not a doctor for the um, the, the Sanitary Commission. Uh -huh. He's not an army doctor, right? What we find out is that his name, his last name is spelled wrong. Mm. And he's a private in the 149th. Hmm. All right, so notice here, what he does is he gives us that trail to move the bucktail wounded from Christ Lutheran over to High Street, right. where the doctors are. Right. Okay? Yeah. All right, and so, you know, again, this is new. My friend found this these two photographs. He bought them like four years ago from a flea market in Lebanon. <laughs> All right? And so that puts a bridge in the story. This stuff's still out there. Yeah, oh yeah. We haven't, I mean, that, that pile of stories, it's still there. There's tons okay? of stuff out there. Um, so uh, at, the, at Francis Xavier, to move on, um, we think about 200 patients. Uh, food cooked on the street, the dead are carried to the basement, Power Sisters, um, Reverend McCulloch from the Christian Commission's there. And then we got doctors from the 150th Pennsylvania, doctors from the 80th New York, and um, one other wounded soldier, or we get Dr. William Norris, and we don't know where he's from. All right, so I haven't tagged him yet. Sisters of Charity, and you know they come to town and we talked about them and they end up at the 
um, Gettysburg Hotel mm-hmm. and spread out. All right. Then on the other side of the street, we're crossing over Baltimore Street, right? And the first thing we get there is the Presbyterian Church. Over here. Right. Okay. And the Presbyterian Church, we can see a sign on it today, a plaque mm. from the War Department mm. that says it was used as a cavalry hospital. It's true, yes. Okay? Well, look, all right, the train station, it was getting a little hot for cavalry guys, all right? <laughs> so the cavalry guys moved their hospital down to the hill on high in Baltimore. So from here, if you're watching, right. down to here. And again, they still, remember, they're setting their hospitals up in town. Right. So they still think that it's going to be okay. Right. Right. Yeah. They still think they're going to hold the town. They, right. Or why right. would they put the, They have ambulances. Yeah. Right. All right. And so the first corps doctors are there. They're in town. They're committed. Right. Um, let's see what else is there. Also behind it, the parking lot for the church today, all right, was um, P. Weikert, the old union school, or Mary McClellan's private school. This is a ladies' school. Opens in 1861. So it's one of three young ladies' academies in town. Oh, okay. You know Miss Eisers, and you right. know Carrie Sheeds. Right. There's the third one there. Gee, I didn't know that. Okay. What, what was you, the name of that one? Um, Mary McClellan. Huh. Okay. And, uh, that's Not John name, McClellan? <laughs> no. Um, so Mary is, um, I have her birth date, 1827. And I'm not quite sure where she fits in the McClellan family, mm. but again, it's I'm sure name. she's related to a John McClellan somewhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to a John McClellan near you. <laughs> hey, all right. So, um, public school. All right. And, you know, that's 1858. The public school down right? here. Okay. So, now we get public school and we get the prison and the German Reformed Church. Right. All right. All, so, all here. All right there in that corner. And... From the public school, we get a letter written, all right, and uh, Justin Stillman from Connecticut, he writes from there after the battle from the 11th Corps Hospital Headquarters. Okay. All right, all right so again, we're thinking that that's going to be the, um, the main part of the 11th Corps Hospital, and this is going to be their hospital complex. Right. Here, right. I'm showing okay. the, yeah, so is, that's, yeah. This is the, the, uh, the what, what is it, the public school? Yes, a Tipton photo, and I actually think that that one came from Adams County Historical Society on one of the waysides. All right, and yeah. then this is the prison, which, okay. uh, is this? That's the prison today. Yeah, okay, but uh, this is Borough Hall to, today. Uh, yes, exactly. Yes. All right, okay, so, and, and two points to this. Okay, one is the office of the local elected officials is the 1863 prison. Okay. <laughs> Does it save a step? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, then, Dr. Wolf, I'm sorry, Sheriff Wolf. All right. Yeah. Okay, so let me get Sheriff Wolf in here. All right. All and right. Then, while, while you're talking about that, this is the German Reformed Church right. that he's talking about. Go okay, ahead. so Sheriff Wolf. Let's out all the civilian prisoners. Tells them to go find someplace safe. Yes. Right? Think of that big, massive brick building. A couple hours later, they all come back to a man and say, hey, this is the safest place in town. Yeah. We're staying here. <laughs> yeah, let, put me back. Okay, so now Confederates have wounded Union 11th Corps soldiers. And so they start putting them in the prison and in the school. Now, after the battle tide turns and the... Confederate prisoners that are in the area. Mm-hmm. The Union Army puts them on the second floor of the school. Right. All right. So if they're going to escape, they're going to have to jump down a step or a flight of stairs to get out. Right. right? Also, this is one of the locations where we know that we had the nurses from Baltimore there. All right. And so what they're going to get is volunteer nurses from Baltimore, Maryland, and they're going to be the one of the locations. They're out on several hospital sites, but they'll also be in that second floor helping out. Mm-hmm. Doctors. Okay. Right now, um, the doctor that's there, the Tate family owned the Eagle Hotel. Okay. Yeah. All right. And John's brother is Theodore, and he's in the Army as a doctor. John uh, Tate. John Tate. All His right, so brother is a doctor in Theodore the Army. Tate. Theodore right, okay, Ted now, Tate. On Chambersburg Street today, there's a Theodore Tate house. Oh, yeah. Built after the, it's built after the war. Okay. okay? But all it's right. right next to the uh, Members First Bank. Yeah, yeah. That okay, keeps so getting robbed. That was, all Tate's, that was all Tate property at one point. Okay. 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 All right, so, now think about this. Okay. All right, he's in the Army. 
yeah. right? And by a fluke, he's supposed to be, I think he's supposed to be stationed like along the railroad. And the Union cavalry comes by and tells the, the Union soldiers, oh, by the way, if you want to stay here, you can, but the whole Confederate cavalry is behind me. Do you want to come along with us? <laughs> <laughs> and so Tate comes to town with the Union cavalry, and he watches the fight on Brinkerhoff's Ridge. Okay. And oddball to oddball, he gets assigned to 11th Corps Hospital, right, on High Street at the school. Right, okay. All right, so here's a doctor from town that's in the Army and gets assigned to Gettysburg. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, it, it just is. It's, you okay. know, but that's the thing. Life okay. is funny and wartime is uh, a Exactly. Mess. All right, and now we'll go around the corner and we'll start talking about the German Reformed Church. All right. All right. Again, July 1st, Private Charles McKay, 11th Corps, 154th New York. The boats, all the streets are filled with wounded. Mm -hmm. All right, so he says that. Trinity Church, Dr. Abraham Stout, um, assistant surgeon for the 153rd PA, 11th Corps. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, observation, Private Ruben Rich, Rich, R U C H, Rich, okay? Ruck. Uh, Ruck, you know, uh, Ruck. yes, any one of those Germans. Okay. None of these guys speak English, by the way. Uh -huh. uh, this is 11th Corps. Uh, okay. This is all German names, and they're all. Uh, for the most part, German immigrants okay. in these places. He he he's got a, he's wounded in the leg and makes his way to the church, and then he talks about things like uh, a Confederate soldier in the belfry getting shot and falling in the street. Hmm. And five days later, when he's able to walk again with crutches, he sees that soldier still laying on High Street. Oh, okay. Um, he's going to talk about. Uh, men that he knew that were in the church. Uh, again, he, uh, we got Justin Stillman, and he's either operated on in the church and moved to the school, and and so there's like a mixture there. But 11th Corps guys, and they set up their hospital there. Now, somewhere in the battle, they get smarter, and they go looking, and they're going to pick the Bushman Farm, the George Bushman Farm, on Rock Creek. Okay. All right, as a hospital site. All right. All right so follow that. Eva Danner, 16 years old, right? The wounded were carried into the lecture room of the church, and there were so many amputations done that the seats were covered with blood, and they had to bore holes in the floor to let the blood run away. So this is... Eva Dana's story, her observation. Because Eric and I are always talking about the, uh, the hole in the floor stuff. Yeah. And what doesn't make sense to us is that, I mean, it would have to be a lot, a lot of blood. All right, and, and, and so here you go. Yeah. How many doctors are are operating? All right. So I know that count. I've got right. I've got Stout there. All right. At, but I don't know how many others. He's got to have more doctors with him. Uh huh. Especially if there's two other buildings. Sure. Right. And you know they're taking the doors, and the doors are now the operating table. Right. Right. And it wouldn't take too much with two doctors or three doctors doing amputations to get to a scene that that describes. No, I I get that, but the thing is like. Uh, it's a they're f uh, presumably flat floors, right? So you drill holes. It's only going to drain what's right there. It's not like it's, it's yeah, exactly. you know what I'm saying, right? So it's like why are you just throwing sand or sawdust down or something? Well, I don't know if they have it. All right, implausible. and and yeah. how how are you going to solve this? You know, they do mundane things that they don't write about. Yes. All right, things that they typically would do. Sure. All right, if your floor was a mess, what would you do with it? I would sweep it. Exactly. Or mop it. Right. Yeah. And so maybe that's what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, so they're mopping it, like sweeping it into the hole. And, yeah. Okay, now that, what do you think of that, Eric? That makes sense, right. doesn't it? I mean, I have to speculate on this. Yeah, no, but, that's that's not a bad we've had, I mean, I've had this conversation, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and with some of the Rangers. Yeah. And, you know, there's things that they just typically do that they don't write down. Sure. Of course. Okay? Of course. You know, yeah. Okay, it. So, and so, what, but Eric, what you you said ah eh, to that uh, theory there? Uh, it just still seems implausible to me. Why is that? Because the only way it makes sense to me that you would do that is one, you would have to have like an insane amount of blood, which coagulates relatively quickly, by uh -huh. the way. So at some point, it's going to turn into jello, jelly, yeah. yeah, more or less. And I haven't heard any stories or seen any any evidence of there being. Floors so punctured full of holes that they look like a colander right. after the fact. Well, right, so but, that's what right. I'm thinking too, is that you'd have to have so many of them. Right, and how big the hole is. Right. All right. But remember, you have a 16-year-old that's writing her observation. So and it's the only place that I see that observation. So this is 
Right. We get this idea from her. Right. And, and, and no and, one okay, else. No one else. I, I don't. I don't hear. I don't see. I, I. I hear about bloody floors. Right. And I hear about slipping. Sure. Right. And and that's in one or two of the other accounts without bringing them up. But this is the only place where we actually see it written down. And it and it legitimately does not take a lot of blood to turn something slick. No. Either. Right. Like not you, at all. You can have a very thin coating of blood on the floor, and right. it's and it oh, yeah. might just as well be trying to run across <sighs> ice. you know and, center ice. Yeah. Right. And, and even if you don't have sawdust. You use dirt. Yeah. All right. And where you get dirt? Outside. Yeah, because Stratton Street ain't paved. No. Just go to the street. Yeah. So I mean, you have a couple of things to go there. So what, you know, if you want to say take your account with a with a grain of salt, <laughs> all right. But you know, again, it's the only one. And when you have these single observations, they're not as bizarre in context. Okay. Right? Yeah. Now, if, if somebody went around and said that they were drilling holes in all the hospital floors, right? Well, that would be a ghost tour. <laughs> you know, and that doesn't work. Okay. Um, yeah, it works for other some. things there. Okay. Sarah Hoff, H- uh, Hollinger, her daughter is Liberty and writes the diary. All right. So she volunteers Liberty at the church. Hollinger. Right. So Lutheran goes to that church. Right. And, and she volunteers and helps out there. Her husband has a horse and wagon that somehow escaped the Confederates. Uh huh. All right. And so he's going out to Culp's Hill. And he's bringing back wounded from both sides to the church. Okay. And remember, the skirmish line out there is more 11th Corps guys. Yeah. That's that's kind of interesting that that would happen that way. Um, let's see. What else? Yeah, so he, he brings yeah. the uh, the wounded from Culp's Hill after the battle. Right. You're saying. Right. But at this point in July 1st. We're, no, we're not no. There and, and, and her account goes over minute by minute what the family did during the battle and afterwards. What's her name? Liberty Hollinger. Liberty Hollinger. Um, and the book, her great-great-grandson writes a book um, from the diary, and it's called Rebels in the Front Yard. Okay. All right. So to me, um, town books, it's, that one's always in the top 10. Oh, all right. Yeah. I'll get that one then. Okay. Okay. Um, and then up the street, and let's go over the churches right now just for an explanation. Okay. All right. St. James Lutheran Church is up on the next corner. On the next corner. I think I got okay. a picture of that in here, don't right. I? Somewhere. It, it. Back up. Back, back, back. Okay. Yep. Keep so, going. I'll, I'll right find there. the picture. Right. And it might be flip over. It might be in the next one there. Mm-hmm. Yep. There it is. Okay. All right, Cal. So the St. James we see today was a wooden church then, but the steeple was about the same height. All right? Okay. And... So here's what we find here. Um, the Reverend writes about this. July 1st, we believe that the Confederates used it as a hospital site. And then they moved their wounded to the farms north of Rock Creek, where the water is. And then on the 4th or 5th, the Union Army reoccupies that location. And they use it as a ward with about 200 soldiers. Okay. All right. So that's that, that location is going to be used, which means they've already been operated on. And they're in recovery mode. All right, so that's what they're using that for. Got it. All right. Um, also, slight note at the other end of the street where the brickyard fight is and Costa Mural, all right, you have the um, the Coons house up there and the Crass Barber house. And I can't see them being used for the wounded, so I have to look for more information. There's no notes on it. But those are the two houses that have the artillery shells in them. Right. right are those, were those the only houses out there, or are those the only yes. ones left? Well, okay, so um, on the Coon side, I think it's two houses. It's okay. It's him and his son. Uh-huh. And then the Barberham was the other side, and that was the farmhouse. So there wouldn't have been any other houses out there. Got it. All right, so um, from the railroad, around the railroad is a warehouse uh-huh. from the Hollingers, Hollingers Warehouse. Okay. Right? And a barn around there someplace and then from that location from the railroad up to those houses is farm got it and even back into the photographs from the 1880s and 1890s if you look for the dedication photos from the coster's brigade Mm -hmm. and look at the background then you see the backyards on york street right because oh on york street right oh wow so all of this This stuff is is just clear exactly good lord okay and again the college in eighteen eighties and eighteen nineties is what creates that build up yeah. on Stratton and Carlisle. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So that's Stratton Street. All right, and then we move on. Oh, one thing else, right? And and I'll paraphrase this, right? But Liberty Hollinger writes in her account, right? The boys in town are making fun. 
you can get her picture out. Liberty, is this? Okay, oh, no, Liberty, that's not okay. Her. Right, so. there's a woman right back here. No, no, there. That's her? No, 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 that's. Oh, right. that's. Uh, the story, that's who we yeah. want. That's the picture I'm talking about right now. This is the one you want? Right. Oh, All right, so okay. bring that one out. Got right, it. there's a woman walking around town in pants. And the boys are making fun of her. And who that is, is this Dr. Mary Walker. Dr. Mary Walker is the only woman during the Civil War that will be given a Medal of Honor. Now, this is interesting. She is volunteering at the German Reformed Church, so she's not getting paid yet. Now, of these nurses that we talked about in these groups, two of the women have already passed their doctorate but they're not practicing as doctors yet. Mm -hmm. So they're here as nurses for the Sanitary Commission or Christian Commission. Okay. Okay. Two of them are only missing one or two classes and will get their doctor degree in 1864 after Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. So they'll leave Gettysburg and go back to school. Okay. All right, so if we want to throw a theory out here, there are three women that are doctors here at Gettysburg. They're taking care of the wounded and two of them will be doctors within a year. And that's a different perspective yeah. than what we typically get in that whole all male doctor thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Not based on their education that they're that good anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we got that. So she's there. Um, Liberty also writes, you know, her house is up there in that split, that the stretcher bearers are going through her yard, right? At going to the hospital sites. They would be coming from the cop farm which is being used as an aid station. Right. All right. And then they're taking them to various Confederate hospital sites and then Union hospital sites. All right. Culp Farm would be what? Out this right here, basically, yes. right? Yeah, is that Liberty Street? Yeah. yeah. Culp Farm is yeah. here. Right. Okay. And yeah, then the street's named Liberty. Yeah. And, uh, we is that after her or because Well, you know, that's always the, the chicken and the egg. Yeah. All right. Was it Liberty Street and she was named after that? All right. Oh. Or was the street named after her? Right. All right. And well, if it it's was actually, and think about the today, it's actually just an access road at the time of the battle to the cult farm, you know, because today it goes to East Confederate Avenue. Right. Okay. And right. Of course, East Confederate Avenue wasn't here wasn't during the there. battle. Sure. Okay. The only road that's there is actually the the farm lane that the cows are on today from the barn down to Rock Creek. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes we can see that if we know what we're looking for. Okay. The um, so so Liberty Street the, we don't see it named Liberty Street on any maps no, prior to her but birth. That's not uncommon, you know. On I mean, we got some of the names, but you know, what do we know? Right. And again, as we pointed out, no good maps of the town of Gettysburg. Yeah. No, at that time. No. All right. There's some others that are not too bad, and we're starting to see some more. Adams County Historical Society has come up with a couple. Oh, have they? Yeah, that are that are that are warrant, but I haven't seen copies they, of them. They found co like well, a couple in or? their files. All right, and and then I I, you know, I I would not want to quote which ones they are, uh -huh. but they're plus or minus ten years. Okay. And they've actually used a couple of experts excerpts from them in some of the recent programs. Good, okay. So cool, and when things are better, you can bet I'll get a copy of this. <laughs> yeah, place, that'd be awesome. Sure. Okay, now, so what we did was we did High Street, all right, and so, you know, the fun thing, the street in the middle of town, Middle Street. Right, right? of okay, course. So, all right, if we wanna start, um, let's see how I wanna do this, all right? Let's start down at Washington Street, right? And Middle Street doesn't have as much activity or at least documented, right? Um, as we mentioned before, at the end of the street is Henry Minnick's house. Right, I didn't mention the end of? Um, Middle and Washington. Middle and Washington. All right, and that would be the northeast side is Henry Minnick's house. So down, and I, I, yes. wait, Middle and Washington. Okay, so, Here. Well, yeah, right, okay. right there. Okay, so I mentioned this because his mother's there. He's captain of Company K. Right, First mm -hmm. Pennsylvania Reserves. And it seems a lot of folks in and out of the house. And so some of the conversations will go around this, and a lot of accounts start there. Right. Okay. But I don't have wounded in that house. Okay. Right. But she seems to be the one that folks go to for questions. Right. All right. So we have that. Then the White House is George Little's house. And I already said that that was, um, um, what did I say, Christian Commission or Sanitary Commission, one of their headquarters. Uh, uh, I have it here in a second. I think you said sanitary. No. Um, I got it here. Hold on. Wait. 
I don't remember. I thought it was Paging Sam. Ken Rich, uh, Christian Commission. Okay. 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 All right, Christian Commission. So I would have too. gotten that wrong right. on the test. Now, you know, part of the problem here is that they're using foreign stocks store for the supplies. Yeah. All right. And so that's taking up the space around there. Okay. Right, for that part of Middle Street. All right. Then on the other side of Middle Street, if we jump, all right. Um, well, okay. I'm sorry. I'm pointing to the wrong yeah. corner. All right. So Samuel Weaver's house. Let's go back to Washington Street in the middle for a second. All right, so we're middle in Washington. It's Dr. Samuel Weaver's house is here. Okay. All right, now, before the battle, all the girls in town meet there on Thursday mornings, and they make bandages and socks and write letters to the soldiers. Okay. So that's, you know, that plays into that whole Christian Commission, Sanitary Commission, the volunteers in town. All right, so we have that. Um, number 60, and now that's at Baltimore Street. And middle. All right. Um, that's the candy shop today. All right. And that's John Cannon's house. And Chaplain May makes note that there's wounded from the 24th Michigan there. And, and it talks about, so that's, we have soldiers recovering that house after the battle. Do you happen to know, uh, right across Middle Street from that, the one on the corner used to be Cafe St. Amon? Right, what, okay. what is it now? Yes. A winery okay. or something? And that is, um, 10-year-old Gates Faunastock, that's his family's house. Uh-huh. It's another right, so Faunastock his dad, house. Okay, so there's three Faunastock brothers. Right. Their, their father, or Gates' grandfather, starts the store. And I don't know, he, he's passing away close there. I have to look and go look at his bio to see where he's at. But he's not active in the store. The brothers are. Okay. The youngest of the three brothers joins the army. Okay. Right. So the other two are running the store, and that's going to be used as the supplies. Right, and as they unload each train load of supplies, the wagons are taking them there, and they're sorting them out to the hospital sites. Got it. Okay. The next morning, the wagons pull up from each of the hospitals out there in the field, and um, takes the supplies to this location. So the the building across from the Fonstock House was a Fonstock building, right? Uh, but it was their home. Right. <clears throat> was it uh, as it's because it's three it's been, yeah, you, four you, floors now. Right. Look at you can look at how many times it's been built and rebuilt and the different colors of brick on the side. Yeah. All right, and so that tells you part of the story. Yeah. All right, not with having it, but obviously each layer of brick in the house or the store. The store too, yeah, right. you're right. Uh, it, 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 it grows afterwards. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> um I used to live in that house when I first moved here. Oh, yeah? I lived in the top floor in the back oh that's cool uh, yeah it had yeah. a balcony and everything and i got yeah. to smell the dumpster from pings yeah there you go <laughs> some there rotten go. fish in july uh, sale uh, smells uh, great yeah, um also down at the other end of the street by the way <coughs> the fancy tan house that's now part of the college that's henry found stock that's the other brother okay all right on on um washington and middle washington and middle down at the end here the not, fancy tan not, house not the uh Oh, oh, I know what you're talking. I like right. that house. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's, that's a college yeah. house now, too? Yeah, college owns that, too. It was a, a lawyer's, and the lawyer sold it to the college yeah. after they restored it. Damn. Okay. And that, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, the lawyer's here. It's cool, but I'll never okay. get my hands on it. Right. Yeah, the, <laughs> the lawyer's here, when they open up an office, they restore these houses. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's no, that's nice. Yes. It looks beautiful. Something about useful lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, they <laughs> found okay. found a use for them. Other side, William McLean's house. Mm hmm Right. And um, 22 East Middle, I don't think there's wounded there, um, but there is accounts from that. And so now we're going to add to it. William's there, he had two of his daughters, 40s, 60s, right? Okay. After the battle, his son William is born. Okay. His son William will become the editor of the compiler. And his son is the one that's going to go around and collect these stories and put them in newspaper. Oh, interesting. Right? Okay. And then Sally, Ma uh, Sally Meyer's son uh, is Dr. Henry Stewart, and he's the one that's going to start the Historical Society. Oh, wow. All right, and then collect them too. So that becomes, you know, that the extension of the care of the wounded is the story of the care of the wounded that these two bring us. Right. All right, so okay. that's why I mentioned him. All right. And the Methodist Church. Uh, we do know that there were nuns working at the Methodist Church. Right? We're not sure what core is going on there. And you know, the other Methodist Church hasn't been built yet. 
right? So, you know, some of the other houses, Middle Street is weak on stories. Okay. Right? So I have to go working and looking for some more of them. Sure. So um, when I do, there'll be a you know, there'll be a Middle Street tour. Okay, I guarantee <laughs> okay. it. Okay. All right. Um, one last thing on that, and and we'll just throw this out there, in front of the Methodist Church slash G A R Hall has historical historical society today. Right. Is a monument. Yes. And right. the monument has 168 names on it. And of those 168 names, those are the boys from Adams County that died in the war. Right. Okay. There's two names on there that um, one boy from Company K and George Sandow from the 21st PA Cav that are killed at Gettysburg. So two of the boys on there died in their own hometown. Huh. Right, because of the battle. Right. All right, so that's Middle Street. All right, um, all the way on the other side, I, I left out Michael Jacobs' house, and of course, Jacobs gives us accounts. What is all right, we're back here? on Washington again. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, and is, isn't that the house that all the fancy lawyers uh, that the college has now that we're talking about? No, isn't that Jacobs? That's no, Jacobs' house is a law office, and it is the light colored brick house on the do it right northwest side. So here. Right here. Yes. Is that, is that yeah, that's Washington, so it's right so, on that corner. Oh, right okay. here. Okay, so that corner is... Let me no, wait a second. second. Wait. Uh, okay, a second. All right. Yeah. Washington and Middle. Right. Okay, Henry Fauna Stock's house. Yeah. All right. Southeast. Henry Minnick's house, northeast. Michael Jacobs' house, northwest. Northwest, okay. okay. All right, so that's... So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So isn't that the house that we're talking about that the college owns now? Uh, college owns... Henry Farnestocks. Oh, okay. okay. I, I was confusing it with that yeah, one. Yeah, okay. And, and something else, too, when you see this lighter brick. Michael Jacobs' house uh, is yeah, here. Yeah, okay. So the lighter brick tends to be older right. and rougher in appearance. All right. So yeah, that gives us some clue of, of the age of the house, maybe. Mm-hmm. All right. So I, I like to point out the light color brick on houses that we know that are definitely right. Civil War houses. Yeah, the orange color. Yeah, exactly. And which of the two? Coons' Brickyard or Hawks Brickyard? Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. okay, two of them deals. All right, and all right. So I think that takes care of Middle Street. Now we're on York. Okay. All right, so York. Well, let's do York, and then yeah. we're going to finish it up, right. and then we'll yeah. and we'll, and we'll come back and finish. do more because there's a lot more than just this quadrant yeah. or these. Well, four I, we've actually we've covered quadrants. most of it, and, and so York Street, um, and so this is what we got: Union officers, Confederates capture wounded Union officers, and they put them in. The Will's house. Right. Okay. Right the here. next house over. Oh, not house house, rather. Will's builds that little complex that's the ice cream shop uh-huh. today. Yeah. Behind it. All right. And upstairs was Charles Tyson's photography studio. Mm-hmm. And he leaves town. And so they start using that building as a morgue and embalming station. Okay. Across the street was the bank. In the bank, is Duncan Carlson takes all the bank's money and valuables and goes to York, Pennsylvania and sends that to um, sends that to Philadelphia. Mary stays behind. Her kids and neighbors, so a total of 19 people, hide in the bank vault during the battle. Right? And that bank Officers, vault is now in the hotel. It's in the hotel. It's the hotel's ballroom is where the bank yeah, is. Yeah, right? that's cool. So they built the ballroom around that because they couldn't remove it. Because they couldn't remove it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, her story. She hides there. She comes out. Um, today, these lots, these 1863 lots, they're 60 by 180. You can put four structures on them. Mm-hmm. And so the bank was on the front side of the lot. And their wooden house was on the back side of the lot, which and would be the the parking lot or I guess basically right now, the alleyway. Yeah, yeah something like yeah. All right. Um, the back of the ballroom. Yeah. Right. So back there in that corner of the ballroom, even. it's like a kitchen, I think, or something, yeah, some, isn't it? Yeah. Back there, yeah. yeah. But, so it's not so there. It's a wooden house then, and Union orderlies, medical orderlies, knocking on the door, and you know we have a soldier here, and he says he wants to stay in your house. He's wounded in a leg. And Mary says, who is it? And it's Charles Hunter, her brother. He was in the 5th Main Battery. Huh. He's wounded in the leg. So what she does is she brings him to the house and sends down the street for Dr. Horner. 
on Chambersburg Street where the two brothers are. And one of them comes up there and they lay him out on a piano. So cool. The bank teller's wife has a piano in her house. Right? <laughs> of course she does. They lay him out, you know, and they operate on his leg and they save his leg. And so he'll recover. What about the piano? Um, I they guess, ruin it? yeah, you know, a little cleaning up probably, you know, I, I didn't hear anything on the piano part of it. I was just amazed that they had one. I mean, to me, that was kind of, why? I, I, well, I would expect it in Carrie Sheets house at the school. All right. But you know, you have to have X amount of wealth to be able to afford that. All right. And to me, that would have been a wealth level above the banker. Interestingly enough, that maybe it came nice. with the house when they bought it. Possibility, yeah. you know, like the bank vault, they built a house around the piano and couldn't move it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next door, Globe Inn. We know at the Globe Inn, Confederate doctors stay there, and they keep Union doctors in that location. So that's right next door. Globe Inn uh, would be uh, the what? Nerds. Um, it's the nerds. <laughs> the yeah. nerds today. Yeah. Okay. The nerd herd. Right, and then we go down the street. Okay. And um, we got a couple other things that are that are bouncing around on, on York Street. Um, let's see. Brafferton. Brafferton Inn. All right. Nicholas Cadori House. All right. Nicholas also owns a farm. Mm-hmm. All right. He has a a, 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 a a business. He's a butcher. He's selling meat to the army, as I understand it. And the Catholic Church, he goes to the Catholic Church. You know, he's from Alsace Lorraine. We expect mm-hmm. that. And he says that, you know, we have no Sundays for six weeks. So that tells me out of ice that, cream. Well, no. That tells me that the Catholic Church is used as a hospital site until the middle of August. Gotcha. And what they do is they have the services in his house. Ah. Okay? Now, across the street from him is this nice tan house, number 39, and that's the Stallsmith. And Stallsmith is a baker. I got to think that he's making food for the soldiers sure. down at St. James Lutheran. Right, yeah, right? makes sense. And then we get on the corner of that, well, okay, next house over is the theater today. The house that would have stood there was Walter's boarding house. Okay. And we get um, the Michigan minister staying there. We get the names of a couple of doctors I mean, that are there, um, wounded personnel. And we also have one wounded lieutenant from Louisiana there. So that's the only place other than Trimble that I have a, a, a Confederate officer recuperating in the house. Huh. Interesting. Then, um, I, and I said, said before, the St. James Church is being used as a ward, right? Across the street is George Swoop's house, all right? And so Swoop is on Stratton. Right in the corner here. Okay. Stratton in York. Right. And he's got nine union officers there. One of the guys is not doing real good. The doctor at the church is busy. The doctor down at the Wells house is busy. So he does what, you know, a, a man of wealth would do. He hires another doctor. He telegraphs Baltimore and hires a doctor to come up and work in his house huh. to take care of his wounded. Wow. Okay. Down the street, there is um, on the south side two houses up from the non-Civil War Purple House. There were no Purple Houses in the Civil War. Right. I'm pretty sure. Okay, if anybody wants to research that, let me know. <laughs> okay. Is Jeremiah Culp's house. So we're talking over here right. now, right? And it's a second block middle. Mm-hmm. And Jeremiah Culp has a carpentry shop. And you know those nice big carpenter benches that they used to work on mm-hmm. to make furniture? Sure. Great operating table. Oh, yes. All right, and so if, if there's a count of... You know, out, out back, you know, gray soldiers, white aprons, blood. Yeah. All right. And then we have to think that the Union Army uses an operating table, too. Ugh. Okay. So on that street, then we have Reverend Essex's wife and um, Mrs. Rupp, you know, church ladies. And we know that they're making food for the soldiers at St. James. Mm. Again, the church ladies that go there. Uh, it seems to be a so, theme on each okay, so, squadron here. Yeah. So you have... Doctors, you have their barracks, right, where they're staying at at the time. You have um, enlisted personnel. You have uh, officers in houses. You have a morgue. Right. right. And so that's all interacting. And whether or not it's intended that way, it still looks that uh, people, patients, and goods are being transferred back It's just back naturally forth. happening. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. There's no I, it's, it seems to me it's, it's too organized it, it, to it, be an but, accident. But, but yes and no, 
um, you know, I, I think a doctor takes over and said, who on the block can make food for us? Right. Right. And, you know, it, it has to be something that line. Sure. Um, the necessity points the direction in which they're going in. Okay. All right. And it's the mother of invention. That. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so. So then, uh, so it. as far as the town goes as a whole, um, these would be the main complexes, but right. uh, other buildings are being used, I'm sure, right. for uh, something, right? One last thing, the Pennsylvania College, the main building. Yeah. All oh, right. yeah. Okay. okay. That's Pender's Division headquarters. Mm -hmm. All right. So 500 Confederate soldiers. Union 11th Corps doctors are in the house here. All right. So over here is, let's see, main building. And now I got to, all right. So that's. Uh, Bowger's house, the president's house. Okay. Eleventh uh, Corps soldiers. Remember, Eleventh Corps fighting there. Right. So Eleventh Corps soldiers there, Confederate soldiers there. Okay. Um, Looks so different than today. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's amazing. And uh, other than the other thing you can do is you can line up. Washington Street. And the gate that goes there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from the stream. You can line up the stream. Here's t the Tiber. Oh, is that the stream yeah. there? Oh, okay. Okay. And um, then the seminary. Oh, wow, right, man. and the seminary uh, starts out as a First Corps aid station, then a First Corps hospital site, and a Confederate site. All right, so, you know, there's hundreds, if not thousands. It's one of the last sites left open yeah. because of so many, right? And we get those. You know, it rains, and the, and there's wounded soldiers in the basement, and they have to hustle them out. And, and ladies from town help with that, right? And um, an embalming parlor on Washington Street up at that end. Okay. And uh, a wooden schoolhouse that's up there on the corner. It's uh, still with, there? Uh, well, no. Uh, it would be across the street from that pizza place at Washington and Lincoln. Okay, yeah. All right, so somewhere in that vicinity, okay. there would have been a wooden schoolhouse that they used for an embalming station. Huh. All right? And, you know, I mean, that kind of wraps it up. You're getting, you know, what all we, we put together here. And I'm going to add one more thing. What about Miss Isler's Ladies Academy? Mm hmm The James Geddes Hotel? Mm-hmm. All right, um, the David McConaughey Hall, in specifically, all right? All right, so all these locations, to me, look like good hospital sites. But there's no record of doctor, patient, or civilian helping out. My but, thought is that what happens is that on the night of the 3rd, the Confederates evacuate their hospital. And if their, their hospitals would have been the nicest buildings in town if you were in charge. Oh, All right, so oh, I mean, that's I pure speculation, you know, and maybe someday we'll come across with an account in any one of those buildings. But right now, all we've got is it was there and it was a hospital. Okay. I, I mean, because I would, I would, I would have to think that uh, any building would be utilized for something, right? right? I mean, you uh, know, these are, you know, these houses are deceptively small right. looking. Like they're, if you go into them, they go long, they go deep, right. and so you could fit a lot of people in them if you're right. stuffing them in. But still, you can't only pick a few of them. You got thousands of guys you got to well, take care okay, of. Okay, so even today, all right. So you yeah. walk into St. James Church now, in your mind, put two hundred soldiers laying on the floor there. Yeah, you can't. And they threw the they threw the pews out of the buildings. You'd have to. Right, right. And um, another thing too is like the lady farm points out, as you go through the building, that all the doors are different, because the surgeons took their doors, uh, and then you know every time we got a dollar or two, we bought another door to fill the hole in the house. Oh God! Okay? Yeah. You know. I guess a fresh um, coat of paint wouldn't do good on a bloody door. And the last part of this. Uh huh. All right, the south end of Baltimore Street. Yeah. Rough house. Yes. Okay. Weinbrenner, we know there's, there's wounded Confederates in the Weinbrenner house. All right. But as we get down here at this end, um, Rupp House, McCreary House, Welty House. All right. I'm not seeing any records of wounded there. But, of course, that's where all the fighting is on July 2nd and July 3rd. Sure. So if the houses are too shot up, maybe they wouldn't be that. Right. Oh, that makes sense. Get on the end of this, the last part of this is flip through there and let's see if we can find a tent on Cemetery Hill. Wanna, a tent on Cemetery Hill. Should be like the Hill. last photograph or almost All the right, last one. All right, let ones. me get... Uh, we'll pull that out and we'll end with it. Okay, very okay. good. Oh, is this one here? Yes. All, All right. right, so pull that guy out. So we're going to pull this out. Okay. And... Here we go. Oh, All look right, at that. so let me get Cemetery Hill. All right, now this is not my research. All right, uh, but we want to thank someone for this. The photograph that you see 
is taken by Philadelphia photographer Frederick Gutekost. Okay, there's a good Irish name for you, right? <laughs> All right. Taken July 12th, 1863. Okay. From the shadows, okay, for the nerds, this is after lunch. Uh-huh. All right, now... The embalmer in that tent, because this is one of the embalming locations, okay. all right, is Dr. William Purnell. He embalms two bodies that day. In the morning, an unknown New York soldier, right? So we don't have that one, around 7 a.m. Around 1 p.m., um, Pennsylvania Zoo Op from Philadelphia, Lieutenant Josh Garcid, around 1. So when this photo is taken. Okay. All right, so this is... And again, for the lady that put this together, I wish I had gotten her name, right? Um, we have an embalming station. We know who the embalmer is, and we know who the patient is in the tent when it was taken. That's pretty cool. So like, think about those records and all these things, and that's what brings it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And with that, I think you've had enough of me. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, can let uh, the editor go. It's always oh, I'm not editing that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm letting that. Listen, everybody, we all suffer together, Ken. <laughs> Ken, for those of you, because uh, I cut it out, I'm sure. Um, but there was a point. <laughs> there was a point where Ken fell off the stool, and I. It, it's our fault because we didn't warn him. Usually, we warn people that that's these things are death traps <laughs> and be careful. But you lean back, but you call yourself. Yeah. Did you hurt yourself? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Ken, thank you very much for coming on. We'll have you come on to talk about whatever the hell you want to talk about. Ken's got a ton of stuff. And especially if it's town-related. If there's something you want to know about town-related, let us know, and we'll see if Ken wants to come on and talk about it. But until then, uh, First Lieutenants, thanks for getting the video so you could see us pointing at maps and uh, other things. And the rest of you, thank you for your support nonetheless. And uh, you have yourselves a good one. We'll talk to you later. All right. Two hours and 50 minutes. That's it. <laughs> Was it really? <laughs> well, I, I, I had it recording for like 15 <laughs> minutes before we started, but yeah.